which one will I plant next? Well, hello there. Thanks for helping me decide. Hmm. Now where can I dump this dirt? I know. There. Casey Uh-oh. Come down here immediately. Yes, sir. Huh? Oh, um, Kissy Fur, this is not the place to dump your garbage. Sorry, Dad, but I had to put it somewhere. Son, everything has its place in nature's scheme of things. Now, this tree belongs in the ground. That butterfly belongs in our garden. There's a right place and a wrong place for garbage, too. <laughs> What's so funny? Now the butterfly's on your head. <laughs> Shoo, shoo, go away. <clears throat> As I was saying, if you dump your trash in the wrong place, it might cause big trouble for you that you won't expect. Sorry, Dad. I'll be careful dumping trash from now on. Hey, <coughs> gang way. Hey, you. <coughs> this garbage stinks. No joke. That's why we're dumping it. But, Dad, aren't we supposed to carry our trash to the trash dump? Hey, Lenny, that's too far to go. Besides, who's gonna know we didn't? I mean, this trash is just gonna float away. It ain't gonna hurt nobody. Just keep dumping, okay? Okay, if you say so. That's the last of it. Yeah, maybe we ought to do this more than once a year. about this fly invasion. I say we go right to the source of the problem, <coughs> Miss Emmy Lou. What's that, Charles? It's Gus and his stupid paddle can. What? Yeah, what does he mean by that? I don't understand what that means. That boat is stirring up the mud and weeds in the swamp. It makes the swamp smell bad, and that's what draws those flies. That is a load of hogwash. Says who? Gus, Charles, stop. This arguing isn't going to solve our dilemma. Let's see what that is. Well, would you look at that? Marion, eat up. The place is crawling with free fly food. Lucky for you, Gus. These frogs are going to help get rid of the flies. Needy. Howdy, neighbors. I'd say our problems are all over. Competition in this here swamp. <laughs> <laughs> 
Come back here with my paddle cap. Folks, I think we have a big problem. No kidding. Those gators out there are dangerous. You gotta save us frogs. Yeah, somebody's gonna go out there and get rid of them. No way. Anybody who goes out there is crazy. We better hole up here for the rest of the year. Well, is there enough food here in the meeting hall for everybody? There was, until Charles got it. <laughs> Sorry, but hey, at least we have plenty of water. <laughs> oh my, what happened? Yuck! This water smells awful. But it comes from our fresh water streams. I, I wonder what's wrong. It's that paddle cab. It's messing up the water. Now that's just not true. Gosh, Giffy Fur, do you think your dad's boat made this happen? No way, Toot. Oh, yeah? Well, can you prove it, kissy liar? Why, you... Hey, that's it. What's what? I'll bet if I follow the water pipes back to its source, I'll find out what made the water go bad. You? You go out there? You gotta be kidding. Nope. And what's more, Stucky, you're all gonna help me. Oh. Forget it. I'm staying right here. Suit yourself, Lenny. Be honey, twin. Pick up Stucky and let's go. Whoa! Just ain't fair, Jolene. One minute it's a feast of frogs, and the next, famine. Oh. Looky, Floyd. I think it's gonna be a feast again. Ooh-wee. Cub steaks. Well, the coast is clear so far. I gotta hand it to you, Kissy Fur. I thought this was gonna be dangerous, but so far, it's been a piece of cake. Yum! I just love Big trouble for you that you won't expect, Charles. Well, thanks to the cubs, we now know that you caused all our troubles. Sheesh. So I'm sorry already. How about you, Lenny? I'm sorry too, okay? Now all we have to do is clean up that stream to fix our drinking water. Yeah, but how can we get out to do that? Oh, those mean old gators are still out there. Hey, let us handle that for you. Ready, gang? Ready. Ready. Then let's get hopping. Look, the food is back. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Let's go clean up that stream. There, good as new. Look, Dad, the flies are going away. Well, they have nothing here to keep their interest. You were right again, Dad, about everything. 
I love you, Dad. Oh, kissy fur. Ow! Not so tight, Jolene. I'll tell you, Floyd, we gotta be more careful from now on. Right, Jolene. From now on, let's stay right here where it's safe. Jolene, just as soon as my broken back heals. Katrina Van Tassel, why do you tremble so? I fear the ghost of Sleepy Hollow. Hark! I hear him now. <coughs> I said, Hark! I hear him now. <laughs> We forgot our line. How can you forget Boo? Boo! Boo! Oh, oh, it's a real ghost. Ew! Oops! Very funny, Lenny. You've just ruined a rehearsal for our school play. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. I don't care. I ain't in it, am I? But, Lenny, we offered you a part. Some part? I get to play the headless horseman's horse? Huh. I should have been the star instead of Kissy Ham here. Oh, come on, Lenny. Be a good sport. Ah, looky there, Jolene. Mm -hmm. Run, everybody! And where are the gators? <laughs> Look, Kissy, the gators are after him! <laughs> Come on, follow me! Shoot! We lost him! <laughs> I bet he's flat in the pancake! Go get him, Jolene. We'll serve him up with syrup come sunup. <laughs> oh, wow! You flat in the pancake, fool! was close. Uh oh. Whoa! Uh, now I, I I just gotta find my way out of this filthy hole. Do you do you see you and he can see through? No, too. The canyon's too deep. <laughs> do you think he's okay? Well, uh, Lenny's got a pretty hard head. Uh, maybe. Maybe. We have to face it. Lenny's gone. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I guess we better go home and tell everyone. I'll be out of here in no time. Ah, <sighs> finally. It took all night for me to get back here. I'm almost home. Hey, what's all that racket? You think somebody died or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't believe my baby's gone! <laughs> it seems like only yesterday I was throwing them out with the trash by mistake. <laughs> I'll always remember the rotten apples he gave us on Halloween. <laughs> remember when Lenny sat out all our toys and squashed them? I miss them already. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Gosh, I was one of the good ones, wasn't I? <laughs> Wait a minute. I ain't dead. <laughs> this is too good to be true. Ha! I'll teach him to lead me out of that play by playing the greatest practical joke ever. For 
first, I'll just borrow a cup of flour from my mom. Now for the pizza resistant. It's goodbye, Lenny, and hello, Halo. <laughs> now for some real fun. Dad, me and the Cubs are going to hold a special meeting of the Cubs Club to remember Lenny, and I'm giving the speech. I'm sure he would have been very pleased, son. Gee, I have to say something good about Lenny. Hmm, this is going to be a tough speech. Very cute, Kissy Clod. Ah! Booga, booga, booga! <laughs> I saw Lenny's ghost! Wow. wow! I think he's trying to contact us. So, so what do we do now? Miss Emmy Lou said sometimes people can talk to ghosts by holding what they call a, a, a seance. Maybe if we have one, we can find out what Lenny wants. First of all, we have to hold hands. Oh, ghost of Lenny! Give us a sign that you're here! Booga booga, you pea brains! Oh, me, Lenny. Somehow I always thought you'd end up with horns. Stifle it, yo yo. What, what, what do you, you want here? Dearest pals, I am doomed to haunt Paddle Camp County because you never paid me enough attention when I was alive. Yes! If you do everything I say, you'll release me from my earthly prison. Please help me out, dear ones, or else. Oh, poor Lenny! We'll do anything we possibly can. Be honey. Yes, oh dear departed one. And then a warthog fizz, please. Shaken, not stirred. Here you go, Lenny, old pal. Kissy Fur, your buddy from beyond grows bored. Entertain us. Again? Please, Lenny, we all need a rest. Kissy Creep, how can you selfishly forget that I'm denied my eternal rest? Gee, I'm sorry. Here goes. Faster, faster. All that spinning's made me hungry. Somebody, peel me a grape. Oh, sorry, Lenny, but you see, uh, uh, we, we, we ran out. Then go to the forest vineyard and get me some more. But it's too dangerous at night. The gators like to sleep there. What are you talking about? I'll use my angel powers to protect you. And I ain't afraid because I'm already dead. See? Now get moving! <laughs> <laughs> Look, everybody! Wild grapes! Well, go get them! Hut, 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 hut! <laughs> this being dead stuff is gonna kill me! Oh, oh look, here they are! I think we got them! Oh, Yay! Oh, finally! Oh, 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 boy! <laughs> Me, I'm not dreaming, Jolene. Only a dream come true, Floyd. Come on, everybody! Run, Stucky! I'm running! <laughs> Keep moving, Floyd! Here I am! Catch me if you can! Look at here, Floyd. I got me an idea. Gotcha! Yeah. Oh, that sounds like Dwayne. <laughs> oh, sorry, Toot. <laughs> well, looks like I got me a catch of the day. Boy, this is just great. Oh, it looks like we're going to be joining Lenny. Where is Lenny anyway? Uh-oh. Gators! I'm getting out of here. Hey, who turned out the lights? Gee, it's all my fault that those goofballs got into trouble. So I guess it's up to me to get them out. 
Here goes nothing. Yeah! <laughs> <Jolie>! <laughs> He's even scarier than you, Jolene. <laughs> Thanks, Lenny. You're a pal. A lifesaver. The bravest. You're a, a fake. Ah, uh, well, yeah. But I sure had you bean heads fooled, huh? <laughs> and, uh, well, I uh, guess we're glad to have you back. Oh, yes, we are, son. Lenny, Lenny, you're on. It is the perfect night for the sleepy hollow ghost to roam. Hark! I hear him now. Boo! Booga, booga, booga! Still showing cartoons. Hold the plug. <laughs> cartoons with a dominant. Good morning. It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's Saturday. You know what that means? <clears throat> it's time for Saturday morning serials. As always, I'm your host, Captain Cartoon, bringing you the platoon. Cartoons from years gone by. And uh, this week is the all Deke episode. Uh, I did all filmation last week. Uh, I wanted to do something fun. A couple weeks in a row. Just on a whim. So I did all Deke. And some of the stuff I couldn't air. Some of the stuff I'm risking. Because I don't even know if I can air some of the stuff. So we're going to try. We're going to try. Uh, we're going to bring back some old cartoons I haven't aired in a while. No repeats yet. So don't worry about that. But uh, we added some new ones. That you've maybe never seen. Hopefully, uh, they'll get past the YouTubes. So, you know, check that out. So, as always, Saturday Morning Serials is brought to you by Are You Game, the best comic book collectible magic video game, uh, toy uh, collectible, and more store located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And you can find. Um, my other show, Talk and Roll, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, and you can find uh, Are You Game on Facebook. So check out all of that. I'm everywhere. You trip in your bathroom and you're going to hit your head on me because I'm already there. So <laughs> I'm everywhere. So I hope you guys had fun with last week. Uh, last week was a fun episode to put together. Uh, I... Not gonna lie, mush blew my mind. Uh, did not know that existed until I pulled that uh, filmation book out and uh, read it. And I was like, "This is crazy!" And I had to bring it to you. So there you go. You got to see mush. Um, weird, just weird. Uh, uh, an animated knockoff of Mash with dogs in the north. <laughs> So, uh, <clears throat> I brought you Kissy for for as your your your, your pre cartoon. Um, I haven't ran Kissy for in forever. I ran it. I ran it like a season and a half straight on Kissy for, uh, and then I was gonna run it all the way out, and then I realized, man, I can't do that to you guys. That's that's tough. That's mean. Um, uh, I'm sure there's some laws against that making you watch that much Kissy for. I also love the fact that Kissy Fur, they just went, for, the, the two main actors just went from doing Kissy Fur to doing uh, Tailspin uh, in a far better, superior cartoon. So, 
that I cannot air because that's a Disney cartoon and uh, no. So, uh, all right, we're going to start off the day with some mummies alive. And uh, man, I, f I found some of my mummies alive toys. Those were so cool, man. You had the mummy, then you put all the armor on them and stuff. Ah, sweet. Then you had the 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 the, the bad guys, and the, the, they all had like snap-on armor. It was a pretty cool design toy. And uh, I I never had anything other than the action figures. I never had any, like any of the vehicles or anything. Um, but I I really liked the design of the toys. Uh, so many people at one point took the the uh, um, the the bad guy like clones and uh, made them into uh, Martian Manhunter figures. Back in the day, it was a little tweaking. You make Martian Manhunter, and they do a pretty good job with them. So go check those out if you can find any of them. But this is Mummies Alive. This is episode four, and this is the gift of Geb. Enjoy. Scarab. Keep it down, Kilbreth. Are you trying the mud bath again? You know it gives you a rash. No. I am preparing to summon Geb, the spirit of the earth. Geb? That's too... <laughs> dangerous. Don't tell me about dangerous. Look. Gray hair. My gray hairs. I'm growing old. To rule the world, not rot in some tomb for fifty lifetimes. Oh, only the Pharaoh's spirit will keep me young forever. I'll use Geb to flush out the boy who holds the Pharaoh's spirit. During tomorrow's eclipse, after the boy recites a special incantation, the spirit of the Pharaoh will be mine. You think the kid's gonna go along with all this? I can be very no, hold it more like this. Hey, it's kind of a boomerang. If you say so, a uh, trial. Oops. Oh, really, Armon? If you must rest, do it in your sarcophagus. <clears throat> now, young prince, I've been studying what I can about the spirit of the pharaoh that dwells inside you. Hold it. Hold it. I can handle that I'm talking to real mummies. Sort of. But I'm not a young prince. I do not have some funky old spirit inside of me. Ah, but you are and you do. See? The amulet's glow proves it. It does not. Someone has 
since awakened Geb, the spirit of the earth, from his sleep. Spirits have nothing to do with it. It was just an earthquake. San Francisco gets them all the time. See, the planet's surface is made of these huge plates that slide against each other. (laughs) 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 Sounds like Armand eating dinner. (laughs) Hey! No, really. There's a diagram right here in my science book. (laughs) <laughs> Fine, laugh it up I'm going home to see if we have a gas leak Ahem, is it something we said? His feelings were hurt Remember, he may be a prince, but he's still only a boy <laughs> So we should check you for a gas leak Well, there are earthquakes all over the world every day Most of the time, we never feel them, because they take place out at sea. Now, Presley, is this how you handle your responsibilities? Mr. Huxley, uh, I can explain. I should hope so, considering how the school board entrusted you with this textbook. But look, look at it now. Ruined. Hear me, (gasps) Rapses. If you do not surrender before noon tomorrow, I shall shake this city until all that's left is a pile of rubble. I remind you tonight at sunset of my power. (laughs) Okay, class. What's so funny? Because when they happen, look out! (laughs) This is definitely not good. But how are we going to fight Gap? He's everywhere. We strike north, west, east, and south. Whatever you say. You guys can't go out there. It's too dangerous. Let's just give Scarab the spirit or the syrup or whatever he wants and get this over with. Go on. Take it. He can have it. No, he can't. Scarab believes that the spirit of the pharaoh will give him eternal life. He will have the whole world under his thumb by supper. Supper. The only thing standing between Scarab and world domination is you. I remind you tonight at sunset of my power. Do we have to watch this? You're right. No TV at dinner. We should talk. Now, what's bothering you? You look like you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders. No kidding. Beg pardon? Look, Mom, is the museum safe? I I mean, if a really big one hit, like, say, around noon tomorrow, would you be all right? Oh, Don't worry about that, Presley. The museum was designed to be one of the most earthquake-safe buildings in the city. Good. The only thing happening at noon tomorrow is that eclipse. And an eclipse never hurt anyone. You're right. Look, I'm tired of running away from that scarab creep. I want to kick some tut, too. Scarab is using Geb to draw you out. It's a trap. I don't understand the pyramid's directions. I asked it if it knew where Geb was. Epic. Enter? What does that mean? Not epic and enter, but epicenter. Ground zero for an earthquake. Oh, wait. The little man in the magic box said that the epicenter of the earthquake was in the bay. How did he now? Uh Uh-huh. We'll escort you home, then face Geb. But... It takes a wise hunter to retreat from a lion's lair and live to hunt again. Whatever that means. There! The western gate! It is so big. They're just ignoring it. They don't see it. One must be an ancient Egyptian to see the Western Gate. The gate can only be open at night. It will disappear with the first rays of the sun. So, enjoy the view. This is ridiculous. We've been cruising these waters for hours. Yes, it appears we failed. (sighs) As I said, Geb may find us, but we can't find Geb. Who dare speak the name of Gab? I thought 
the western gate look big. Good thing we did not bring the prince. You have Prince Rapsies, uh, the impudent one who brought me forth from the western gate. On our honor as the pharaoh's guardians, he did not wake you nor bring you here. More lies and more lies. Do I look stupid to you? Why don't you tell him? You will pay for your arrogance. This is my kind of fight. Don't be too sure, Wrath. What is happening? We have to recharge. We've been out here too long. I'm nearly depleted as well. How are we going to beat Gib and Scarab? Head for the Western Gate. Aye, aye, Captain. We can trap Gib on the other side if we lure him through just before it closes at sunrise. But how are we going to do that? Perhaps with Scarab's assistance. <sighs> Where's everybody going? Chico, you'll never make it! Surrendering yourself to Scarab isn't one of them. Jakal would agree. We exist to protect you, O oh Prince. Even if we have to sacrifice ourselves. I know. Your responsibility lies with your studies. Go to your school. We will rescue Jakal.
when are we going to try to rescue Jakal exactly? After we rest and restore our powers. Otherwise, we'll be dead on our feet. Dead. <laughs> I get it. It's nearing noon. Time for the eclipse. You'll never possess the spirit of the Pharaoh. You might as well finish with me now. Oh, but you're the key to this entire operation. The incantation that will grant me eternal life must be spoken during an eclipse. It must also be spoken by a Pharaoh. As it turns out, young Rapses is the only Pharaoh left. Rapses will never help you. And yet he will, in order to save you. No pharaoh would ever sacrifice himself for someone like me. Apparently. <laughs> this pharaoh would. No! Look! Rapses is up there! Jakal hasn't recharged! He's powerless to protect him! Now. All you have to do is repeat a few simple words, and your friend here goes free. No, don't! It doesn't matter what happens to me! It matters to me. It's the Western Gate! Opening in the middle of the day! The eclipse must have caused it. Now we're in for real trouble. You mean we weren't before? With, With the, the strength, strength of Ra! Rapsis, son of Amenhotep, ruler of the lands of Upper and Lower Egypt. Call on Ra of the Hidden Face to give this man, Scarab, eternal life. <laughs> Call on Ra of the Hidden Face to give this man, Scarab, a swift kick in the tut. <laughs> That's not what he is. This is no game, boy. You're right, Prune Puss. Game's over. But attack. Ah. Dumb mutt. Hey, it really does rain cats and dogs. Ugly dogs. Yes, I am handy to have around. Cretans. Question? Be quick about it. It was you, wasn't it, who woke up Geb? Yes, of course it was me. Who else would have the wisdom to... Yeah. While I was hanging upside down, I saw Geb come through the gate. Figured you might want to chat. So you woke me. I must have rocks in my head. Not in there. No! Amat, stop! Bad dog! Bad dog! You 
you've been practicing with the boomerang. Luckily for me. I figured I owed you one. I still do. Now let's not get so cozy here. You do realize Scarab will find some way to escape from Geb. Perhaps. And the Western Gate will open again at sundown, and Scarab will return to this world. Ah, oh, cheer up, Wrath. As long as we are all together, it will all work out. I'm on. Pull me up. Pull me up this instant. Man, I think I'm in for one very weird time. You can be a member of FOOM. FOOM. Yeah. You get, a, you get subscribed to... You also get Slim Jims. There you go. Hulk say about... What does the Incredible Hulk say about Crazy Magazine? Ah. All right. This is an old issue of Logan's Run. What's really funny about Logan's Run is an early Thanos appearance in the issue of Logan's Run. Uh, and what's really funny is the behind-the-scenes story on Logan's Run. So, all right. Hope you guys still dig Mummies Alive. Um, somebody called it, uh, they called it uh, the Egyptian Power Rangers. Uh, I've heard of Undead Power Rangers. Uh, Mummy Rangers. The Mighty Morphin Mummy Rangers. <clears throat> and, yeah, I get it. I did not even think about that until somebody pointed it out to me about a month ago. And now I can't unsee it. So, yeah. It is a Power Rangers knockoff. <sighs> Weirdly. So, all right. So, we're going to keep it trucking. And we're going to a cartoon I have not aired in forever. We're going to do some Get Along Gang. Get Along Gang. All together. In our, whatever. Uh, I I kind of got away because, man, some of these are so saccharine sweet. Man, like Kissy Fur and, and, and uh, Get Along Gang and... The one I'd love to air, but I can't for weird reasons is Shirt Tales. Um, but yeah. And, and I remember being a kid and people like you were either Shirt Tales fans or you were Get Along Gang fans. And I'm just like, I just watched that cartoon because the cartoon I watched before that was one I liked. And the cartoon after that was one I liked. And there was nothing on in that time slot. So I watched either Get Along Gang or Shirt Tales. Um the only thing I remember about Get Along Gang, it, well, Shirt Tales was they all wore shirts. 
uh, the orangutan talk, like Humphrey Bogart. I remember like a little tiger cub guy and stuff, but yeah. And then and then get along gang, and we all remember get along gang because I've aired that. So this is get along gang episode ten. Enjoy. <laughs> Get along gang, get along gang Each one so special in his own way Montgomery's the leader and he's such a good sport But get along gang, get along gang There's Wooma and Dottie with the spirit Bingo the prankster doesn't ruin it Logical Porsche will figure it out And that's the slip of the lead machine Get up with the get along Project on marine life is fun. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think I finally got something. Nice work. What kind of bait are you using? I think we're doing great. I feel sorry for those little fish. Don't worry. We'll put them back in the water as soon as our project is done. <laughs> Does that include Zipper's bicycle pump? Does that answer your question? The fast and Zippers. Hey, look, it's what are you kids doing around here? We're collecting specimens for our science class. You think you might do better working for my boat? Hey, fantastic! Come on, all of you, get aboard! Come on, Zipper, just keep trying. I'm sure you'll catch something. I guess it's just not my day. Those rocks at the head are called Titan's Teeth. You see, they're laid out almost like a hopscotch board. You gotta zigzag through them real careful like. I'll bet you know these waters better than anybody. <laughs> I should. I've been sailing them for over 40 years. But I've gotta still keep my eyes open. <laughs> Sure, a close one. Oh, a little excitement never hurt anybody. Why, in the old days, these waters were chock full of adventure. Pirates and smugglers galore. Yeah, those days must have been something. I've always been kind of sorry I missed them, you know. I'll tell you, if that old lighthouse up there could talk, it'd tell you pirate stories that would knock your socks off. Now all it's used for is a bird sanctuary. I sure miss that old light. Sorry you didn't get anything for your science project. Thanks anyway, Annie. Let's see. We've got to separate this by genus, family, and species. Do you kids know where Annie Otter's boat is? Sure. It's right over there. We want to hire you to take us to that old lighthouse. Oh, well, why would you want to go there? That's our business. We'll pay you whatever you want. Well, I could sure use the money. You just hired yourself a boat. Just stow your stuff and we'll get underway. That's perfect. They're going to the lighthouse. So what? A bird sanctuary, dopey. I could get a nest or something for my science project. Hey, where's Zipper and Bingo? Ooh, they must have gone ahead to get out of carrying these yucky specimens. Ooh. Next stop, the old lighthouse. <laughs> what was that? I don't know, but it came from over there. Look. It's a couple of kids. Well, what are you boys doing here? We heard you were going to the lighthouse. I figured I could get something neat from the sanctuary for my science project. It was all his idea. 
You're a real pal, Bingo. Oh, you know that you shouldn't stow away like this, don't you? You kids just make sure to stay out of our way. Got it? Got it. I wonder what's going on. You promised we could go to the refreshment stand. In a minute, okay? No, I'm just going to take myself. Hi, Officer Growler. What are you doing here? I just need to know if any of you have seen these two. Now, if you kids see them, you be sure and let us know. And stay clear of them. Are you guys nuts? You know those are the men that hired Annie's boat. Yeah, and if we tell Officer Growler Annie's helping a couple of crooks get away, she could be in trouble too. These two brats can help us unload. Hey, look, mister. We... Move it! Sure thing. Come on right up. Oh. Whoops. I'm real sorry you did that, kid. Of course, not as sorry as you're gonna be. Oh, we've been looking all over for you. Refreshment stand, but as usual, no one listens to me. What a day! You disappear. Zipper and Bingo take off for who knows where. I do. They snuck back onto Annie's boat. We better find Officer Growler and tell him what we know. Quick! You know you crooks will never get away with this. Hey, in a few minutes our ship will be here. We'll be loaded up and gone. That picture you showed us, those men. Annie Otter took them to the old lighthouse and Zipper and Bingo were on the boat. This is Officer Growler to the patrol boat. Pick me up at the dock immediately. Roger, Officer Growler. We're on our way. You'll never make it. What did you say? You'll never get past Titan's teeth. I listened to Annie, so I know the way. Guess I'll be coming with you. That's true, and if she goes, we all go. Well, I don't... Oh, come on. Let's get to the boat. All right. We're finally getting out of here. This place is beginning to give me the creeps. Okay, men. Pick up the stuff and let's get going. And while we're at it, let's tow that scow out and scuttle it. If only we had something to get us out of these ropes. stop those crooks from sinking my boat and keep them from getting away. There's no way, Annie. Their boat is twice as big and fast as yours. It's too dangerous. That's why you kids are staying right here. Okay, Portia. Get ready to help navigate. It's no use! This thing's rusted solid! 
good. This ought to do the trick. All right. Come on, Blush. Now we can turn it to the rat captain's eyes and save Annie. Just another few seconds and... What's going on? I don't believe it. Okay, boys, round them up. Well, I guess that wraps this one up. With a little help from the get along gang. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for fixing my boat, Montgomery. It was nothing. What does it feel like being a hero? Oh, <laughs> great. But I hope I never have to do anything like that again. What's the matter, Zip? I still haven't gotten anything from my science project. What's wrong with you? I got this terrible itch. What's this? Oh, yeah. That bird's nest in the lighthouse gears. This is a rare blue-footed booby bird feather. You want it? Fantastic! We nailed the crux, and I got my science project! Especially on such a wonderful day. Yeah, but why do we have to ring Portia? She can't even ride a bike. We let you come along and you can just barely ride a bike. Let's go to Hoofnagles for ice creams. Yeah! Wow! Come on, Portia. We're on our way to Hoofnagles. It's beautiful. Whoa! Thanks, Mr. Hoofnagel. Gotta run. Hi, Breaker. I need to find someone to do my paper route while I'm gone. It's too much work. I'd rather be playing. Who wants to deliver dirty old newspapers? What a drag. Breaker, do you pay for someone to do your route? Oh, sure thing. Five dollars. Five dollars? I'll do it. And if you do a really good job, there's a special prize for Carrier of the Month. Here's the list of houses, and you can ride my bike. Good luck. What am I going to do? I can't let Breaker down, but I can't ride the bike. I guess there's only one thing I can do. Papers? All the papers? I 
guess we can do it. I'd be happy to help, but the ink from the papers gets my beautiful hands dirty. No way! I'm not delivering newspapers. What'd you say, Bingo? No way! That's for suckers! How was that again, Bingo? Okay, okay, I was born to deliver papers. How about it, Puma? Well, if everyone else is pitching in, I suppose I could deliver one or two papers. Great! We'll each take one street. We'll have the route delivered in no time. But... Come on, everybody. Grab a page of the route list and some newspapers. But it's my responsibility. And incredibly, it's just one of my many talents. the number of hours by the time it takes. Hmm. Oh, no! The gang delivered the papers all wrong! It's my responsibility to make sure all of Breaker's papers are delivered right. Thanks for doing my paper route. 
Oh, I, here's the five dollars I promised you. You also won the Courier of the Month Award, the Grand Prize. Grand Prize? Here, Bingo. You did all the work. This money and the Grand Prize belong to you. I got the money and the Grand Prize. I bet the Grand Prize is really grand. Bingo Beaver, Portia might not have needed your help at all if you hadn't pulled that mean trick on her. That's right. You'd better share with Portia. Either give her the money or the grand prize. Choose. Here, Portia. You deserve it. Gee, thanks, Bingo. Okay, Breaker, where's my grand prize? Right outside. Follow me. Come on, gang, follow him. <laughs> Here it is, the grand prize, a $50 miniature racing bike. But, but it's too little for me. Gee, Bingo, that's a really neat bike. Can I ride it sometime? You know, with a bike this size, I bet Portia could learn to ride in no time. Yeah, what do you say, Bingo? No way. This bike's worth $50. If I trade it with Portia, I'll only get five dollars. You're right, Bingo. I'd keep the bike if I were you. Don't worry about looking like a jerk. That's right. You look really darling. Darling? A jerk? <sighs> you wanna trade? Gee, Bingo. This is the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Come on, Bingo. Let's go for a bike ride. You can leave. No, it's Porsche's turn to leave. Demons with a flash out on a limb, Superman's powers crippled by kryptonite, and a power action kick to boot? Will Satan? Who said that? It's Green Arrow, Dr. Fate, and Martian Manhunter, part of Kenner's Superpowers Collection. This will help Superman? Figures with power action, each sold separately. Now, Lord Darkseid? Now, Calabas. How will Superman foil Darkseid's dirty deed? You decide. Team America. You can make them go through water, or climb, or jump. It's Team America and the Super Stunt Dirt Bike. The Super Stunt Dirt Bike is designed with nubby wheels, so you can make them do high jumping stunts. Team America, you can make them go through water, or climb, or jump. It's Team America and the Super Stunt Dirt Bike, from Ideal. Alright, so I'm going to tell you a little secret about the Logan's Run comic from Marvel. Uh, it was supposed to only be a uh, movie adaptation. And then Marvel decided they were going to continue the story. And the people behind um, Logan's Run were like, MGM was like, um, no, you, you just have the rights to the story, the movie. And then they had the falling out and it ended. So, yeah, they started to try to do their own stuff with Logan's Run in the Marvel, in a Marvel universe and... MGM said no. I <clears throat> hope you guys have fun with some uh, get along gang. Um, but we're going to keep going. And we're going to uh, a cartoon that um, I vaguely watched. Uh, I only watched this because I was a hockey fan. Uh, and I liked Wayne Gretzky at the time. And we're going to do some pro stars. Hopefully you'll be able to actually see pro stars. And, and YouTube doesn't shut this off. Um, but pro stars was Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, and Bo Jackson. See, Bo Jackson was a, was a twofer. So they only had to animate one person instead of a baseball player and a basketball player or a football player. They just animated Bo Jackson. Uh, for those who don't remember Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson was a two sport guy. He played both baseball and bat and football, uh, huge in the time. And, uh, I remember when I had, I worked at a comic book slash baseball card shop at the time 
and they have a Bo Jackson card with him with a baseball bat like this and his uh, football pads on, you could not keep that card in at all. Sold out constantly. Anytime we get some in, put it in the case, boom, it was gone. And I don't think that card's worth anything now. So, but here you guys go. This is Pro Stars, episode one, and this is the Slugger's Return. Time is the same time. Pro Stars, Joe Stars, Queens Hot. Today's show is called The Slugger Return. Hey kids, how you doing? I'm Bo Jackson. Hi, I'm Wayne Gretzky. And we're... And we're the Pro, Pro Stars. Stars. Pro Bro, looks like we've got trouble. Hi, my name is Jason. My name is Jack Thorne. Wayne, did you ever quit? I never, I never quit playing hockey, but there was a time where I wanted to quit. Uh, I was uh, 13 years old and, and there was a lot of... Uh, politics that went on and uh, interference from at that time people I didn't think should have been interfering with uh, with kids hockey I'm sure my parents would have understood if I quit playing something well the only problem is Bo you never quit anything what can I say I like sport it's game time Guys, our very first video. The Pro Stars are in action. Hi, Pro Stars. My name is Jimmy Hanks, and I heard that you guys help kids with problems, and I got one. I was in the Museum of American Sports where my dad works, and I was telling him something that I don't think he liked hearing. Because after I finished, he just walked away. A minute later, I heard him yell something about Cleats Robinson, and I haven't seen him since. And I'm scared. The disappearing father, that sounds serious. More serious than you think, Michael. Bo knows baseball history, and Cleats Robinson has been dead for years. Dead? Then, gentlemen, there's only one thing to do. It's game time! Look, oh, oh yes, as mom, your coach, your mentor, your basic nudge, I want you should be extra careful with the wonderful gadgets my lovely Denise has designed for this mission. All right, Wayne. Now this might look like an ordinary wristband, but when you press here, it instantly becomes a full-sized hockey stick. Hey, cool. Yeah, but there's more. Check out this boomerang puck. Wonderful. This way you'll never lose it and we'll save money. Oh, let me show Bo his stuff. Mom, don't you think you should let Denise handle the demonstrations? Don't worry. I'm like a ninja schminja boy. I can go home. As Mom demonstrated, that was the pump baseball bat. But it's also got a laser torch. And last but not least... Hey! Come on back up, guys. I 
just wanted to show you how to activate the grappling hook harpoon. Oh, yeah, all right, the grappling hook harpoon. I knew that. Oh, yeah, yeah me too. Uh, yeah, um, I was just stretching. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, Michael, uh, your turn. Oh, great. This special Guga over here will give you a nice little lift. Wow. We're talking some serious hang time there, Mom. Uh, guys, are you sure Mom's the best coach we can find? Don't just stand there. Let me move. Okay, doggy, my boy, let's go do it. Kick some booty and bring back Pro Star 1 in one piece. It's under control. I was born to fly. My horse out! I can't There it is, the Museum of American Sports. Uh, attention, all passengers. Pro Star 1 is about to land. Please return your seat backs and tray tables to their upright and stove positions. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. Hey, guys, wait for me. Hey, there he is, Pro Bros. Wow, Michael Jordan and Bo Jackson? It's really you. Hey, and Wayne Gretzky, too. I'm so glad you're here, but I'm almost afraid to tell you what I did. Oh, take it easy, little bro. Don't worry. You can level with the pro stars. I think the reason my dad left is because I told him I quit Little League Baseball. I kept striking out. Listen, Jimmy. No father would leave his son for striking out. <sighs> well, Slugger Hanks did. Slugger Hanks is your dad? That's right. After Slugger finished playing ball, he took over this museum. Yeah, and he's supposed to meet the commissioner of baseball when he comes to dedicate our new statue. The commissioner? But now he's not here, and it's all my fault. Your dad may not be here, but it's not because of you. Something's up, and the pro stars are on the case. Let's do it! The brat called in those pumped up pro stars. But they don't scare me. Why, you ask? Because I'm crazy, insane, and a snappy dresser. Besides, once my electronic wave generators are activated and ready, I'll have control of every exhibit in the museum. And I'll be ready for the next phase of my plan. I should wash these. Remember, Cleats, we need the brats as part of our plan to capture the commissioner of baseball. My dad went into that room and disappeared. Well, let's go. Now, slow down, Bo. You don't want to break anything. Ugh, this place gives me the creeps. Look, here's the guy my dad yelled at. But, Jimmy, it's only a statue. Oh, Careful, Bo. Hey, Michael, this guy uh, lost his head. Whoa! I mean, whoa, it's a head. <laughs> You know, this place is weird. On the contrary, my dear Pro Bro, it's all starting to come together. Oh, is that right, Mr. Airhead? Aha, Clockwork de Lorange, just as I thought. Yes, it's me. I mean, I hand over the brat. No, no, no. I thought you might say that. Then Cleats will have to take him. <laughs> With a little help, of course. <laughs> Watch out, Bobos. Clockwork's up to something. What's going on here? It's game time, fellas. Let's do it. Make room, Bo, for a little more Pro Star power. Go get him, Wayne. Great shot, Wayne. Hmm. A wave generator. Obviously designed to transform inanimate objects into remote-controlled robots. Yeah, obviously. Uh, hey, is it just me, or is all this adventure making you guys hungry, too? No, no Wayne. Wayne. It's, it's just, just you. you. Well, there's a snack bar that way. 
double drafts. That dummy let me down. But I'll get that kid at the sandbar. I mean pro star. I mean snack bar. <laughs> Mom, check it out. It looks like our old pal Clockwork de la Lange is back on the prowl. We don't know why, but it probably has something to do with the fact that the commissioner of baseball is due in front of the museum at noon. You are the boy is the Nisola. Take Paul Star 2 and warn the practitioner. <laughs> you mean the commissioner. Whatever, just go! Oi, such driving. Wayne, you can't eat that. You're right. I forgot the garlic. No, no garlic, garlic, Wayne. Because Bo knows bad breath. Ha! Well, the great one is stopping his face. I am preparing to stop the pro stars with the world's biggest basketball. What's up there? That's where they keep the world's biggest basketball. Wayne, grab Jimmy. Come on, watch out! A ball like this could play havoc with my shooting percentage. That ball's about to play havoc with us! Pro Stars, you're doomed! With a capital B! I mean D! <laughs> Bo, if we don't want to end our careers, it's time for some outside shooting! <laughs> Nice shot, guys. Pro Stars! Hey, are those guys great or what? Huh? Jimmy? Yo, guys, Jimmy's gone! Jimmy, Wayne, are you guys in here? Clockwork, I know you can hear me. If you do anything to my little homeboy, you'll answer to me. That would be unbearable, wouldn't it? <gasps> hey guys, it's only me. Yo, snap out of it. Hey Wayne, look, I hate to inform you, but it's not only you. And whatever you do, don't turn around. Huh? No. Ah! Ah! Nice try, Snooky, but for no wrestling. Ah! Hey, oh, oh, my face, I can't see. Don't worry, guys. Your high flying pals got it. Under complete control. One completed. Finished. Done. Final. Over. Let me go. Where are you taking me? To see your father. Where else? Phase two is now underway. Soon, with the help of your father, organized baseball will bankrupt itself in order to buy the commissioner's freedom. Then, revenge will be mine. My dad will never help you. He would if his son was in grave danger. And I do mean grave. When I was a kid, no one ever let me play center field. I swore that someday I'd get even. And now the time has come. <laughs> Hello, sports fans. This is Barb Albert reporting live from the Museum of American Sports. The commissioner will be here any minute to unveil this statue of baseball's greatest slugger, the Babe. Daddy? Jimmy? I thought you'd left me because I quit Little League. Never. I'd never leave you, no matter what. Oh, give me a break. And listen up. This will teach you for stumbling onto my plans. Get down there and greet the commissioner like he's expecting. And I don't want him thinking anything's wrong or the kid gets it. Got it? That must be the commissioner's limo. I hope I'm not too late. And here is the commissioner of baseball. And to greet him representing the museum... Commissioner! Yeah. 
I'm here to warn you. Slugger Hanks. Commissioner. Now, let's play ball. You'll never get away with this. The Pro Stars are going to get you. Wrong, Jimmy. The Pro Stars have already been caught. <laughs> <gasps> What's happening? Uh, what's going on? Commissioner, the baby sends his very personal welcome for a visit you'll never forget. <laughs> you know, Bo, I'm sure I read somewhere that being in a shark's belly is not healthy. Now I can see what I'm doing here. <laughs> My diagnosis is that this bear needs a mycolectomy. No problem, Wayne. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Bo. The operation was a success. Shall we go? Guys, lose the shark. Denise, what's going on? Well, the babe came to life and took the commissioner and Slugger Hanks hostage. Attention! Attention! This is Clockwork Delarange, and I have a rubber band. I mean a free hand. I mean a demand. If you want the commissioner back, you will have to pay whichever is larger. One hundred million dollars or the combined salaries of all left-handed relief pitchers in the majors. But that'll bankrupt Major League Baseball. Of course it will, you pompous fool. That's the idea. Good luck, Pro Stars. I've got a plan. Vertical wall climbers, activate. Right behind you, Bo. Look out, babe. Flight 23 is on the way. Oh, goody, goody. Now I can have some fun. Hold tight, gentlemen, and you'll be out of there in no time. Here it comes. Absolutely the fattest gopher ball in history. And the babe takes a mighty swing. And it's going, going, gone! Uh-oh, I've got an injection. I have to admit, Mom's goo really work. I might not be able to rescue them, but from here I can definitely direct the battle better. Bo, aim for the left wrist. That's where the control box is. Understood and on the way. Oh, great. It's jammed. Have I ever let you down? Uh, actually, no. Grab hold, Commissioner. You too, Slugger. Thanks, but what about you? To be perfectly frank, I have no idea. Don't worry, Bo does. One grappling hook rope slide to the rescue. <clears throat> Bo, you're the best. But now it's time to ice that madman. Pro stars, you may have defeated me this time. Uh, by the way, who are you calling rad? Did I mean bad? Did I mean mad? Did, anyway, you haven't heard the last of Professor Clockwork Orange. <laughs> Uh-oh. Mom's not gonna like you losing the bat. At least I didn't crash Pro Star 1. Daddy! Clear out, everyone! I don't know how to thank you for all you've done for me and my son. Not to mention organized sports. And guess what? What? I've decided I can't play Little League Baseball after all. Jimmy, you know I'll love you even if you never play ball again. I know that now, Dad. But I also know that even if I strike out, I'll be just like my buddy, Bo. <laughs> Score one for the kid. I'll tell you what, little slugger. If you ever do learn how to hit a curveball, you can teach me too. Sure thing, pal. Remember, 
The Pro Stars are all about helping kids. Hi, I'm Brian. Wayne, how do you get ready for a game? I think to get ready for a hockey game, it starts the day before. The way I get ready for football is I sleep. I tell the guys, don't wake me up until we get ready to go on the field. Bono sleeping. Wayne, you're crazy. We have a light skate in the morning. I make sure I have a, a breakfast and a big dinner at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And I sleep for about two hours in the afternoon. So, as you can see, I sleep a lot. <laughs> I think all professional athletes realize that it's our living, and uh, if you're not properly rested, you can't you can't perform at your best. And we travel so much, and the game was, games are so physical that it's important to, to rest properly. And Bo sleeps a lot. Hi, my name's Rakita. I'm two years old. Do you get other players' autographs? I have some friends that we trade off bat. I have a few athletes. I have Larry Birds, and I have uh, Oral Hershizers. Never asked, just walked up and asked someone for an autograph. I'm at an age now where I have a son that uh, one day they they'll uh, appreciate what I have for them. So I kind of collecting it for myself, but but for him too. Whenever I build my parrot at home, I'll have the I'll have a bat rack in my house with the autographs on the back. Oh, I only have one. Um, it's a pretty expensive one, <laughs> but it's not for sale. Both. What was your greatest play? There's a lot of great plays that stand out in my mind. Um, I have to say the 89 All-Star game when I hit the first inning home run. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm 10. If you could pick one more pro star, who would it be? Uh, has talent and, and has charisma and everything. I, I think that I like Andre Agassi. I'd pick... See, you know, I surprised you guys, didn't I? You guys were looking for a Gordie Howe or... Noah Ryan. How he has outlasted all the pitches of his era. <laughs> I shocked you guys. you guys dug pro stars um i just think it's a weird concept for a cartoon but you know they thought for sure ain't that right vince uh-huh yep say they thought for sure pro stars was gonna be something huge i remember the toys at like burger king and uh yeah i think i think you can still you can go like garage sales and you buy like a bag full of toys and still get a pro star toy in there somewhere so we're gonna keep it going to another icon from that era. That's right, MC Hammer. I just rewatched the the doc of the uh, Attack of the Doc, which is the uh, Attack of the Show documentary, and they have the Mick Hammer joke. 
uh, because Olivia Munn called him Mick Hammer instead of MC Hammer. So Mick Hammer, don't hurt him. And uh, you can go get a Mick Hammer at uh, McDonald's. No. Uh, the fact that they never cashed in on that is crazy because that would be almost perfectly made for McDonald's. I'm just saying. So I guess this is Hammer Man. And uh, this is Weenie's Winners. Enjoy. Hammer Man! Hammer! Whenever there's a crime, some cooks are gonna do time. They all better beware, cause the Hammer Man will be there. Here's how it started a long time ago. The legend of the Hammer and how it began to grow. He was given magical shoes from a hip hop Motown dude. Together they had power, they stood up for what was right. But Gramps was getting old and he couldn't keep up the fight. Right. So Gramps and his granddaughter, they went out on the road Searching. to find a man they knew could tell who was worthy of the load. They met a guy named Stanley, Stanley. who was dancing every night. He helped the kids play every day, his heart was out of sight. So Gramps opened up the bag and took out the magical shoes. He set them on the ground and they soon began to groove. Right. The shoes knew at once they had finally found their man. They hopped right on his feet and he became Hammer Man! Hammer Man! Hammer! What's up, everybody? How you doing? Hey, how's How's going? What's going on? How you doing? Anybody got any pets? Yeah, yeah. eight cats. Eight cats. Any dogs? Two dogs. Hey, now that was that's for Winnie has. She has a dog, but it's not an ordinary dog. It's a spine eye dog. Spine eye. Spine eye. Yeah, the dog is spine on hammer, but uh, hammer man can handle it. Let's check it out. For the sadistic shoe stealer, Paula Bunyan, the greedy graffiti gangster, the basely marmeister, and that mind messing mobster, Boss Grindenheimer. That mangy mob will fit our plans perfectly. <laughs> Take care of my baby. Aw, oh, poor guy, you've been abandoned. And you look hungry. <laughs> I think we can fix that. Big old dog, come! Big old dog, stop! Wow! Here's that poor stray dog. Oh, poor dog! Just a call. What's the plan? To hurt a man. man. You know, I want to give you a little checkup, like I've been learning in vet school. No problem there. Now say, ah. Bah. Sure is a strange looking collar. We could be in trouble. How so? Is it on too tight? Don't you get the picture? She's going to find our hidden microphone inside that mutt's collar. Don't get worked up, Marmeister. The job I did hiding it, no one could find it. It's kind of funny you have a brand new collar, but no tags. Well, no matter. <gasps> Don't worry. I'll find you a good home. But if you're going to hang a while at the rec center, I'm going to have to teach you to obey. Any luck finding those escape crooks? Nope. We checked all their old hideouts. They must be operating from someplace we don't know about. Hammerman had us marching all night. Hmm. I'm one worn out shoe. We deserve overtime. 
Well, rest fast, guys. We'll try another search as soon as you're ready. What was that? No, Big Old D. No! Come back! Big Old D! No! Come, dog! Come! Stanley! Gramps, look out! I still don't see how listening to all this silliness is going to get us to Hammer Man. Work your brain, grinding Hammer. Hammer Man loves kids. That's why he's always showing up at that fun-infested rec center. Sooner or later, we'll overhear where he's headed, and we can draw him into our trap. <laughs> and when he's in our clutches, we'll lock him in those lead boots inside that hammer-proof cell. And Oak Town will be ours to plunder. Our plan is a masterpiece. <laughs> I'll take over every wall and cover it with graffiti. Not if it's in the shoe district. That's my turf. Hold your high tops, you footwear fanatic. All factories, even shoe factories, belong to me. So I can force the kids of Oaktown to work in them. Not the walls. Yeah, the walls. <laughs> 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 Whoa, boys! Save it for the real enemy! Hammerman! Man. All right. One of you take first shift listening in on the pooch. I've got some serious shoe swiping to do. No fair. We'll draw stars. Short one loses. <laughs> you lose. You lose! Not so fast! I drew the longest straw. <laughs> Happy eavesdropping, Grindenheimer. Come on to face uh. it. <laughs> sit. No, sit, big old D. Sit. Sit. Oh, sit already, you dim-witted dog. <sighs> Come on, big old D, please sit. Mm. Oh. Yeah, you're down to your shoelaces, Lefty. Oh, look! It's a hairy, slobbery, flop-eared monster! No, oh, don't try that old trick on me. If I turn around, you're gonna steal back all your checkers. Ah! Oh, back off, fur face! Drop that shoe! <laughs> Poor souls buried alive. <laughs> Patooey, a very grave situation. Yeah, a canine catastrophe. Somebody help us! Somebody help us! Huh? Out of the way, big old D. Bad dog, very bad dog. Yeah, you, you tell him, Stanley. We can't go on like this. Yeah, he goes or we go. Chill out, guys. I'll take care of it. He buried my my best pair of shoes, Winnie. He's a menace. Just a little longer, please, Stanley. I promise I'll train him so he can find a home. I just know Big Old D can be a really good dog. Oh, no! He's tracking something again! Come back here, Big Old D! Big Old D! Come! Come! Come back here, Big Old D! Big Old D! Come! Come! Wake up, Grindenheimer! How are we gonna catch Hammer Man if you're sleeping on the job? Huh? What? You're supposed to be listening to that speaker! Stanley! Quick! We need Hammer Man! What's the problem, Gramps? Two boys are trapped in a deserted building. Where? Sixth and Chadwick. They're on the second floor and the ceiling's caving in. We gotta get Hammer Man over there. Got you, Gramps. Let's do it. I told you we'd find out what Hammer Man will be. Let's get him! Help! We're up here! Help! Help! I know I promised you a rest, and it's been a hard morning, but this is important. 
You know we never walk away from duty. Yeah, right, he's right. Stand back, Stanley. Geronimo! Stop. It's hammer time. Look, it's the hammer man. Get out of here. Don't you worry and don't you fret. The hammer man will be there as fast as a jet. Look, hammer get down. Yo, hammer, go, hammer, go. Shed no tear. In just a second, we're out of here. One swift kick and Hammer Man's ours. Some real cheap thrills. What happened to Hammer Man, Gramps? Don't worry, he'll be okay. I think. Ah, uh, ah, uh, there he is. Hey, wait a sec. You're the ones who belong in jail. Your life of crime is doomed to fail. This again, Hammer Man. My portable mind master will put you under my control. Ah! You will do as I say. I, I can't. I, I won't. You will do as I say. I will do as you say. <laughs> That's a good boy, Hammer Man. Let me make you comfortable and relieve you of those shoes of yours. Ouch! Get your shoe-stealing mitts off me, Bunyan! Hola! What's taking you so long? I'm finally snapping out of Grindenheimer's mind messer. I gotta get out of here. No way, Hammerman! You will obey everything Boss Grindenheimer says. No! No, I won't! Yes, yes, you will. After ten hours of my new mind messer program, you won't even remember who you are. <laughs> Hammer Man's had it! Chortle, chortle! Chortle, chortle! You got it, Joe. I'm afraid that's Hammer Man's sleeve, all right. We found it in the wrecked building, but there was no sign of the hammer. What could have happened to him? Gramps, Gramps, come here, quick! We are interrupting this program to bring you a criminal announcement. Escaped Villains Amalgamated has Hammer Man all locked up. <gasps> now that he's no longer around to protect you, we're taking over, Oak Town. I want every shoe out on the sidewalk by sundown. Every Oak Town kid must report to one of my factories at dawn. Pick any factory. They're all mine now. <laughs> chortle, chortle, chortle. Gramps! And if you don't do what we say, my graffiti monsters will paint you ugly and then erase you. <laughs> I don't get it, Joe. It's like they knew exactly where Hammer Man was going. Just who did you tell that those boys were in trouble? Only Stanley. He said... Well, uh, he, he said he'd get a message to Hammer Man. Well, Stanley sure wouldn't tell those crooks anything. You sure no one else heard you? <laughs> nope. Only that big lug of a dog. But he's too dumb to be a spy. Hammer Man's got to be singing one sad song. We got to try and find him. Come on. We'll come, too. 
Nope, you stay. That muddle just messed things up. Where could Hammerman be? And how did those crooks find out where he was headed? <laughs> Aw, is that collar too tight? <laughs> hmm. What do you know, Big Old D? You were wired for sound. <laughs> Those sneaky, no good... Well, I guess it was no accident you were on our doorstep. Let's clip those jailbirds' wings. You're so good at tracking cookies and mice. How about tracking Hammerman? <laughs> Hammerman! Find <laughs> Hammerman, big old D! <laughs> go, boy! Go! <laughs> <sighs> before Hammerman's mind is totally messed, Grindenheimer. Just a few more minutes. Remember, I get his shoes. Good work, Big Old D. You found him. Now if I can just find a way in. Mm. Mm. Oh, he won't budge. Ah, but maybe I can get it to say, ah, bingo. Shh. Oak Town will soon be licking my boots. Why, just Oak Town? I'll create an army of graffiti monsters and we'll run the whole world! Yeah! They're geniuses! We should have fooled out even this years ago! Hmm. <gasps> you will forget you are Hammerman, and you will do what Boss Grind and I must say. I will forget I am Hammerman and will do what Boss Grindenheimer tells me. No, I won't forget. I won't. Gotta fill my mind with rap. I can't afford to let it nap. Can't let these bad guys mess my brain. Gotta keep rapping against the pain. Oh, no. I've got to turn off that mind-messing machine and get Hammerman out of there. Oh, 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 oh. just a mouse. I've got a brainstorm that'll curl your toes. We'll open a museum and charge people four shoes each to see the form of Hammer Man. Now's my chance. Stop her! She's letting Hammer Man keys to that cell. Where are they? There! Stop her! Huh? What? Since that mind message stopped, I'm feeling better. I've had it with these crooks. They give me indigestion. They're headed back to jail. About that, there's no question. <laughs> Go call the cops, Winnie. It's time these jailbirds face the music. Got to face the music. Face the music. Ah. <laughs> At last, Hammerman. <laughs> now, finally, I'm taking your shoes. Correction, my shoes. Unhand me, you shoeaholic harpy. Put a sock in it. <laughs> Help! It's shoe napping. Help! <laughs> hey! You dumb mutt! That's my shoe! Oh, just my luck! I'm out of the frying pan and into the drool! It's time you and I settled up, Bunyan! First, I got a present for you, Hammerface! Shoot Try dancing through those babies barefoot! <laughs> Stop, you big mutt, or I'll turn you into mucklucks! What hit us? I think it was a ten-ton truck with fur. Break it down. Have 
Finish! Stop him! He's got my shoe! Quick, I need my other shoe! I can't fight three villains on one foot! Your history, Hammer! Ancient history! This better work. Big old D! This is disgusting! Oh, I knew it! Good boy, Big Old D! Very, very good boy! Come on! Hammerman, catch! <gasps> Zap him now! It's hammer time! Call it a day, guys. Call it a wrap. You crooks are finished. Gonna get the sack. Run! Ah! was wrong about you big guy you're a hero he sure is now would you tell stanley that ah uh, stanley will get the word trust me and the hero of the hour is your friend and mine big old d so you never found him a home huh no we we never did i don't know what to do with him He's such a good tracker. I'd like to use him as a police dog. Think you'd like that, big old D? Mm -hmm. So long, big old D. I'm gonna miss the big old guy. But not much. Save me! I'm drowning in slobber! I'll bet a lot of you out there have a dog, or maybe a cat, or some type of pet. We always have to remember that our animals depend on us for food, water, love, and kindness. Never mistreat them. They deserve your love. We all have a responsibility to protect the animals. That means at home as well as in nature. Just remember, we're the only friends they've got. So let's all join together and help all the animals of the world. I'm MC Hammer, the Hammer Man, and I'm out of here. Peace. The sectors continues. Crossfax is no match for the defenses of the ancients. Dargon's armies push the evil sectors back for the hive. The monster Nar swallows up Skeeto. Pinsor evens his score with Skulk. But Pinsor doesn't see the giant destructor fall. Is this the end of Dargon's loyal friend? Watch the next episode of Sectors by Coleco. Sidewinder Cycle. Your parents put it together. And Sidewinder's got the Stunt Shifter. Sidewinder. With sure grip steering, super sleek styling, and a Stunt Shifter that can spin you into excitement. Sidewinder. Sidewinder Cycle with Stunt Shifter. New from Tonka. All right. Who remembers when you got one episode of Transformers for $24.95 on VHS tape from FHE Entertainment, Family Home Entertainment. 
Could you imagine buying an entire season? Jesus. That would cost you a fortune. I mean, like... Like, crap. I have I have a couple of those still, but literally I bought them at garage sales and flea markets and stuff. But I do have some old school... The big box. Big boxes, I think I might only have one big box Transformers, one big box G.I. Joe, and then some big box Robotech. But they're all from Family Home Entertainment, F-H-E. So, there you go. So, I hope you guys liked Hammer Man still. Um, it's so goofy and such a product of its time. Um, not really the best animation. Um, but, you know, it's Deke. You know, you look back at some of the old school Deke cartoons and look at the ones they had at the end. You're like, man, what happened? Did, did you, like, fire all the good animators or something? <clears throat> Or did they, they, you know, did, did they all go back to their villages? I don't know. So, I hope you guys liked Hammer Man. But we're going to creep on over to another cartoon I have never aired. Uh, one that I forgot was a deep cartoon. Uh, one that I think is hilarious because it, it is connected now strongly to G.I. Joe. And that is Action Man. Um, Action Man has been everywhere i mean they've made comic books they've made toys they made cartoons i think they were like this close to a movie like not that long ago <clears throat> and then when um they redid the uh um um i guess hasbro verse for idw comics they introduced action man into that so you had mask and and uh Micronauts and Rom and Action Man and G.I. Joe and Transformers and Gem. Weirdly enough. But uh, here you guys go. This is Action Man Episode 1 and this is Explosive Situation. <laughs> Action 2, your limpet bomb has found a home. I copy you, Action 1. Detonation is set for two minutes. Dr. Clint's gonna have a hard time launching a Skullman attack when we cut off his fuel supply. He'll have an even harder time getting past the wall of fire we'll be leaving in his harbor. Now get out of there while you can, over. Copy that. Skullman, alert! Infrared scanners detect an intruder on the island. If it's Action Man, I want him captured! Action 2, X is after me. I'm not sure he won't mind me borrowing his boat. He's taking our boat after him!
reaction to. I've just got one hot idea. Here comes one extreme getaway. to see in space. Maybe this is one time Dr. X won't show up. Right. Just because nothing's happened yet doesn't mean it will. Base, we have a situation here. Engine malfunction. The bird is starting to crack. Safety override's inoperative. Consider a career in television. I trust everything went as planned. Of course, Doctor. I ejected the package precisely over the coordinates you gave me. Extreme alert! We've lost one of our nuclear warhead transports. Any chance the pilot got out alive? I'm afraid not. That plane couldn't have been backing a nuke. There isn't a trace of radiation on my scanners. Which means, wherever that bomb is, it's still intact. And that means trouble. Natalie, upload the pilot's flight plan. Jacques, power up the deep radar. Nuck, give us some specs. Nuclear Dynamics 857, mini megaton class. 2.4 meters long, mass 347 kilos. Blast radius three kilometers. Minimum safe distance, 20 clicks. Listen up, folks. We're receiving a signal. Action Man, this is Ursula Stavanger calling for Action Man. Ursula? Huh. Memory flash, I am? Huh. Yeah, I thought... <sighs> no, it's gone. Action Man, this is Ursula. Dr. X, nuclear bomb, please. Action Man here, your signal is weak. What is your location, Jacques? You think I'm a miracle worker? I know you are. And you're right. The signal came from a small island near Pitcairn. I've got a nuclear battleship on its way to the island as we speak. Well, tell them to stay outside the safety zone until I signal. If Dr. X has that bomb, there's no telling what he might do. All right, team. Let's get extreme. <laughs> The good news. The bad news is the place is crawling with skullmen. Welcoming committee, eh? 
I have to move fast and hard. Knock! Send down the light strike vehicle. On its way, Ace. Secretary Norris reports the nuclear battleship will arrive in the vicinity within three hours. Remind them to stay back. We've got an explosive situation here. Over the drop zone now, Ace. And you know what that means. Yeah, time to get extreme! Remember me, Action Man? Dr. X told me your memory was gone, but surely you remember us. Save the reminiscing for the fireside. Right now, I've got a nuclear warhead to neutralize. It's Action Man. Activate the trap. I'll show you. The whole jungle is booby-trapped. Action man, behind you! No problem. Hiya! Disarmament begins at home. Sweet dreams. Oh, no, you don't. Uh -huh. Sleep tight. Uh-uh-uh. Your skills are always impressive, Action Man. But I believe this game is mine. Surrender, or she will suffer the consequences. You win, X. Just don't hurt her. <laughs> How very noble of you. But nobility has a price, action man. And in this case, the price will be threefold. The world's freedom. The freedom of your team. And you. <laughs> This is Secretary Norris. Stand by for Action Man's signal. Imperative, you do not approach any closer. That's an order. This is Norris, over and out. Mm, come on, Action Man, come on. All right, X, you've got me. You don't need her. Ah, let her go. Excellent idea. Just what I was about to suggest myself. Action Man. I see. It was all a setup. You've been working for Dr. X all along. A girl has to earn a living. You heroes are so predictable. Then just tell me what's going on. It's really quite simple, Action Man. You've been playing right into my hands, falling into my trap like a good little rat. The nuclear battleship you so conveniently requested is now stationed just 20 kilometers away. And that battleship carries enough nuclear missiles to destroy half a continent. Even you can't be insane enough to attack a battleship. It'll be staying well outside the range of your little nuclear firecracker there. Exactly as I anticipated. Because you see, I'm changing the rules of the game. Deuterium. It will quadruple the bomb's radioactive yield. The battleship and its missiles will remain intact. But its crew will be instantly overcome by radiation. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? By simply absconding with the unguarded missiles, I become an instant nuclear power. I will command entire nations. The world will bow to Dr. X. Bring him along. I have a last little surprise in store. 
Emergency signal. It's action, man. We're going in. Jacques, take the controls and find us a place to land. Natalie, let's get the four-wheeler ready. Got it. Autopilot on. Activate wheelchair access. You realize my enjoyment, Action Man? When that bomb detonates, it will not only mean my triumph, but the destruction of you, my most hated enemy, as well. You haven't won yet, Dr. X. <sighs> Only a matter of time, 30 minutes to be precise. Leave a few expendable skullmen to guard the island. Everyone else to helicopter. Shall we? Oh, yes. Excellent bait, my dear. But your usefulness to me has ended. Farewell, action man. Think how lucky you are to enjoy your last moments in the company of a beautiful woman. <laughs> we have to get out of here. Stop that. Soil's too loose. You'll cave in the whole pit. Ah! What are we going to do? We can't just give up. We won't. But first, we need my equipment belt. How are you at gymnastics? The signal's coming from the top of that hill. Ah! Mm, those lousy skulls got the tire. We gotta hoof it. Heads up! Or maybe I should say skulls up! Okay, girl, let's really get tough on these two. Now, where was that signal? Up there. Let's go. I repeat, stand by, Geneva. Await the signal from Action Man. J just a, a little further. Ah, uh, 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 uh. Now, we're in business. Now what? I mean, it's time to get extreme. Wait! What about me? Yeah, what about you? Look what happened the last time I trusted you. I, I have knowledge of your past. If you don't take me with you, you will never find out what I know. signal and you're just in time we've got exactly four minutes to save the world action oh baby baby can you disconnect the timer not a chance it's wired to blow i'll have to pull the detonator We cut the blue wire first. Wait! No, cut the red wire! Are you crazy? It'll blow! I know bombs! And I know Dr. X. Trust me. We're gonna be vaped! Trust me. I don't know how I know, but I know. Good call. Huh? We've only got nine seconds left! The detonator's still gonna blow! Everyone okay? Affirmative. Ursula, are you... She's gone. You can't blame her. She'd be looking at prison time. Well, she can't get far. This is an island, remember? She'll find a way. But we'll meet again. I'm sure of that. She knows things about me. And I'd like to find out what they are. You will. But for the time being, let's call on the cleanup crew and head for home. Right. Action man calling Geneva. 
The nuke is disarmed. You may proceed with disposal. Good work, Action Man. <clears throat> Blast you, Action Man. You've not heard the last from me. Dr. X will strike again. I swear it. Mission accomplished. Well, All right. Let's go home. Load action memory file. Loading. Activate virtual memory scan. Activated. Vira, search memory file for Ursula. What were we doing here? Could we have been in some sort of mercenary school? Vira, analyze. Activity unknown. No match found. But surely you remember us. But I don't. You will never find out what I know. My past will not stay closed. I won't let it. Vira, update action. Blast you, X. Stay out of my mind. Save file and exit. I've made mistakes in my time, and here's what I think about them. We all make mistakes, but we always learn from them too. They show us what works and what doesn't. You know that embarrassed feeling you have when you make a mistake? Especially in class, in front of your friends. I get that too. It's just a feeling. It will pass. Don't let it stop you from trying something, and don't be afraid to make a mistake. That's brave. That's taking action in the best way possible. And when it comes to action, I wrote the book. Nintendo newsletter? Whoa, nice graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. It's the Legend of Zelda, and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ganon are pretty bad. Octorox Tech Tech's levers, too. But with your help, our hero pulls through. Yeah, go, Link. Yeah, get some. Awesome. Intense. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Your parents help you hook it up. The Legend of Zelda sold separately. Yeah. Remember when this was Lego's Expert Builders? Yeah. Now that would be like for like toddlers. Because, uh, man, they made stuff way, way, way over complex. Man, I'm not going to lie. This this always makes me happy. And going to the center of an old Marvel comic and seeing that great big two page ad of Star Wars toys. Ah, and that was Wave 2. So this is the. Um, some people call it the uh, holiday special wave. <clears throat> but if you look, I can see that. Technically, I guess I can see it. So, um, yeah. Micronauts. As I completely just throw a book on the floor. Luckily, that's just my reader copy. So, no biggie. All right. I hope you guys dig Action Man. Uh, I'm not going to lie. The, the guy definitely looks like a... Uh, uh, um, Almost like a, 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 
I guess, visionaries or a supernaturals villain. <laughs> so we're going to go over to a cartoon I forgot even existed. Um, because I absolutely love the movie that this is based on. <clears throat> and we're going to bring you some Alienators Evolution. Yeah, that's right. Evolution, the movie, had a TV series, a cartoon series. <clears throat> I love Evolution. It's so... It, it was. I guess it was originally supposed to be uh, Ghostbusters 3. That's why Dan Aykroyd's in it. Um, it was every intention of being the like new updated um, Ghostbusters at that point. So that's what I was always read. Um, whether or not that's true or not, or just an urban legend, take it as it is. But this is Alienators Evolution 1. This is Survival Part 1. <laughs> Ago, life on Earth faced its biggest threat since the extinction of the dinosaurs. An alien threat. The genus landed near the small community of Glen Canyon, Arizona. Luckily, several local heroes took the situation into their own hands. Dr. Ira Kane, chemist and biologist at the Glen Canyon Community College. We've only got one shot at this. Step on it. You got it, Dr. Kane. Wayne Green, local student and fireman in training. Harry Block. Professor of Geology and Girls Volleyball Coach. And Dr. Allison Reed, Assistant Chief Deputy at the CID, the Government Center for Impending Disasters. Wayne, is that really necessary? Oh, you bet, Dr. Kane. Ah! These four heroes were the only hope to save life on Earth from total annihilation. Our only chance for survival. Come on, let's pump this baby full of selenium and go home. Let it rip, Dr. Reed. 500 gallons of blue goo dandruff shampoo. Coming at you, ugly. Having destroyed the alien menace, the four were given a hero's welcome at the White House. <laughs> Oop, there it is. Harry Block dodges the tackle, fakes right, and bam, gets a hug from the president. Instant replay. Slam! That's what I'm talking about. Me and the president. Pals. Amigos. The big friend Dito. Hey, maybe I should call him and see if he's up for hitting a bucket of balls. Hey, I was watching that. I know, for the 535th time. Huh, you're just jealous because you didn't get a hug from the leader of the free world. Give it up, Harry. We're yesterday's news. The genus is wiped out. The government seized all my samples. The president isn't returning your calls. Maybe he didn't get my messages. Let's face it, without the genus, we're just three guys with a fire truck and 500 gallons of dandruff shampoo. So we just give up? That's it? We just throw in the towel? No. We take matters into our own hands. We stand tall against overwhelming odds. We fight the government. <laughs> you and what hey, army? Uh, whoa, whoa. Uh, I'm an army of one. And? We were heroes once. Maybe, just maybe, I can weasel my way out of these parking tickets. Come, Professor Block. City Hall awaits. Yeah. I knew 
I should have stuck with that brand name detergent. And so I ask you, Mr. Mayor, what is a hero? A hero stands tall. A hero lays it on the line. A hero parks any place he likes. Ticket free. Yeah, <laughs> if it wasn't for us, there wouldn't be any no parking zones. There wouldn't be a Glen Canyon. Or even a world. Are you guys still going on about that giant amoeba thing? What was it called? Dominus Terrestrial Neogenus Avalara. What? The genus. Yeah, whatever. Uh, that's yesterday's news. I can't get any press for that. Tell your sob story to someone who cares. Bye now. And don't let the door hit you where the genus should have bit you. Come on. This is hopeless. <laughs> yeah, it. They. Worms growing. What are you going on about, Hendrix? That. Harry? Yeah, I'm. Uh, close the door. that horrible thing. It's the genus. And it's evolving. Ah! Here. Tickets. Con. Park free. Anywhere you want. Lawns, red zones, playgrounds. Just get that thing away from me. Time to use an old favorite. And run number six double tuck. Okay. Looks like they're working from a different playbook. I've been thinking. The genus has a tough time getting a foothold on our planet because they can't easily assimilate carbon and oxygen. Two of our most prevalent elements, both of which are contained in the CO2 ugh, found in this fire extinguisher. Yeah, forget the science lesson, Professor. Just do something now. What's the magic word? Please! Okay, here goes. I am a genius. Come on, we've got them trapped. Uh-oh. Where exactly does that duct go? Well, pretty much everywhere. Oh, way to go, genius. You know, Mayor, sarcasm is an ugly color on you. This isn't good. The genus monsters could be anywhere. <laughs> what are you gonna do? First, I'm gonna take a few steps away from you. Second, I'm gonna think of a way to find the genus. We need to fight fire with fire. We can't track him without some kind of bloodhound. We need genus cells. Uh, you don't have any genus cells. Yeah, but a certain government agency does. Get Wayne over here with that selenium fast. I need Dr. Allison Reed. Off the bench and into the game. Exactly. You and Wayne hold down the fort until I get back. Oh, help, oh, help. Won't some pig and some firemen save my baby? Don't fret, man. I'll save your baby. Firemen in training. Wayne Green at your service. Hang on! Oh, man down! Man down! Live! Live! Oops. That's not fair. Oh, such a senseless waste! Touch my bear again and I'm telling Mom. Fireman in training, Wayne Green speaking. How may I direct your call? Wayne, get the shampoo ready. There's been another outbreak of the genus. Wayne? Wait, are you listening? With your equipment, Dr. Reed, we'll be able to evolve a creature to track the genus through the pheromones they emit. You're gonna create your very own genus monster? It takes a thief to catch a thief. Oh, you're playing with fire, Ira. You think I haven't thought of that? Mm. Well, okay, yeah, I actually haven't thought of that, but there must be some way to permanently freeze the organism in mid-evolution. What's this? Uh, a jar of jelly beans? Yeah, interesting. And this? Oh, I was working on a device to mimic the high-speed evolution of the genus cells. It promotes exponential cellular growth. 
If we switch these two and modulate the primary transistor, we can induce neural mitosis. I give you the evolutionary stasis ray. I'm a genius. <laughs> All right, Dr. Genius. Let's just see if it works. Game! General Woodman? You're not allowed in here. I'm calling security. Fine. Maybe security can handle the new outbreak of the genus. An outbreak? The genus? We've got an experiment to finish, Dr. Kane. All right. First, we take an active genus cell. We coordinate the heat ratio with that of the genus's mitosis. And then, freeze its growth permanently with the evolutionary stasis ray. It's alive! Wait, Ira! Remember what happened to Dr. Frankenstein. Well... Hey there, you freakish gelatinous thing, you. It's okay. It's made an imprint. It thinks I'm its mom. Well, there is a strong family resemblance. Hey, do you smell the big bad genus? Do you, boy? Do ya? <laughs> smell. Seek. Seek. It recognizes the scent. Oh, it's got a tremendous sense of smell. Not to mention a tremendous smell. Ugh. What is that horrible thing? It's a... Uh, it's a genetically altered symbiotic stasis in evolution. Gassy? Uh, yeah. What? Kane, this is not the time for stupid pet tricks. Whatever it is, get it out of here. Now! Anything for you, your generalship. Hmm. Mind if I steal this evolutionary stasis ray? It'll look great in my kitchen. You certainly have a funny way of saving the world, Ira. Well, you know, it's more of a hobby. What I really want to do is dance. No! No! I can't believe it! Where are the chainsaws? What kind of lumberjacks don't use chainsaws? Hey, the axe is a noble instrument. Shouldn't you two be out there saving the world or something? Well, the scared man in the fetal position has a point. A little of the old blue goo dander shampoo and some CO2. Let's go fight evolution. get carried away. The victory is more important than the celebrating. We're number one! We're number one! Who the man? Who the man? Slap me up high? Down low. Good to see Harry and Wayne taking saving the world so seriously. <laughs> we are the biggest, toughest hombres the world has ever seen. <clears throat> Gentlemen, and I use that term very loosely, Meet gas. Oh, this is your miracle bloodhound. Exactly. Observe. Come on, Gassy. Find the genus. Go. Seek. Seek. Go on. Find the genus, Pod Gassy. Go on. We're not gonna find anything. Yeah, we already took care of all the genus monsters down here. <laughs> Ugh, 
Looks like the missing stink here is a defective detective. I thought for sure Gassy would work tracking the genius. Well, the good news is, Gassy is a great big, not so sweet smelling success. The bad news is. It's raining ugly. And me without my umbrella. No problem. Just watch them wither and fade away. We've got the selenium, the old blue goo. Ah! Ugh. It's so easy, I almost feel bad for the little guy. They've evolved an immunity to selenium. In less than an hour? That's. that's amazing. They're beautiful. <laughs> You know, I hate to disagree, Dr. Kane, but they're the ugliest things I've ever seen. And this boy has to look in the mirror every morning. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Iris got his game face on. He'll think of something. Best defense is a good offense, and it's out of the park. <laughs> Get it off of me! Get it off of me! Wayne, Wayne, it's just Cassie. Oh. Get it off of me! Get it off of me! Gotta stop the evolution. Neutralize the genus exponential mitosis. Reverse it somehow. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's it! We need to put these genus creatures in reverse evolution. Hurry, Ira. There's three seconds left on the clock and no more timeouts. Almost ready. I give you the devolver. It slices, it dices, it... Just blast them already. It's all over here, folks. Score one for the human race. Alien Menace all is right. shut out. Wow. Hey, wow. If that thing gets away with the pot, it could start a new colony. Why can't I deal with normal mayor problems like zoning and parking and cutting ribbons and not giant alien freaks? Ooh. I can't get the shot. It's getting through. Ira, alley you. Think fast. Jelly beans. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, in an end of the world as we know it kind of way. Two points to Harry Block. Oh, and an assist to Dr. Ira Kane. You know, I think this is gonna be the start of a beautiful friendship. Mwah. Not a bad day's work, Dr. Reed. No. I should have known the genus wasn't completely destroyed. We should have been prepared. Well, they won't fool me again. We'll be ready for the next outbreak. Get it, Gassy. Go on, get it. Those two are a match made in heaven. A boy and his stink monster. Who let all these unauthorized personnel in here? The CID is restricted. This is a top secret governmental facility. Emphasis on the word mental. It's men like you that threaten to bring this great nation to its knees. Everybody thinks you're the big hero. I've been serving this country for 27 years in uniform, and never once have I received a medal from the president. But you, 
you waltz right up there and get a medal. And a hug. Well, don't forget my hug. Um, General, the candy jar... Don't interrupt me! I want all unauthorized personnel out of here in five seconds. Five, four... Get it off me! Get it off me! Three, two, one. Okay, sorry, all of us unauthorized personnel have got to go bye bye now. Hey, who's up for ice cream? My treat. Kane! Come back here and get this thing off me! Kane! Kane! Crisp cereal really shakes up this nutritious breakfast. Que pasa, Toro? Pasa your cereal, sugar bear. No way, Jose. How about a vitamin packed punch? Ole. I can't get enough super golden crisp. It's got to crunch with punch. Yeah. I'll give you an orange for a red. Now you can get your own sugar bear gummy bears in four fruity flavors free. Only in specially marked boxes of super golden crisp cereal. So, you know. It has been, God, almost four weeks straight of runny noses and bad sinuses. I will feel good one day, and then the next day I will be just solid packed in my head and have a horrible headache. Because, like, literally, I can push here, and it feels like I can, like, ah, I can, like, feel it behind my eyes. Oh, it sucks so bad. Ah, uh, <clears throat> You know, maybe I got a sinus. I don't think I had a sinus infection because I, when I got a sinus infection last time, I felt horrible. And I feel fine, but eh. As I ramble on about my health, uh, I feel good. Just bad sinus headache. So, eh. I should be used to it. I've had them my entire life, but. So, I hope you like that because we're cruising on over to another cartoon I know you guys like. We're doing some Jason the Wheeled Warriors. Um, Jason the Wheeled Warriors, I like. Uh, has a super catchy theme song. Has one of the best villains ever. Had a cool toy line. <clears throat> Somebody really needs to pick up one and bring back. So I'm looking at anybody out there, especially in the cell toys. Man, they're, they're, they're doing something crazy. They're doing the cell verse. And they're just putting all that stuff in one universe. I mean, Power Lords is going to be with Sectors. Just setting you know, and those, those I absolutely love both of those toys. So here you guys go. This is Jason the Wheel of Warriors, episode 22, and this is Quest into Shadow. Monster Enjoy. Minds. Jace searches for his father to unite the magic root and lead his lightning league to victory over the changing form of Saw Boss. Wheeled warriors explode into battle. Lightning strikes. There's a power. Don't stop rolling, the fire is on 
accomplish with those probes anyway, Gilly. There's a saying, Herc. Know your enemy. Those probes can go where we can't. See what we can't. If you mean into monster mine territory, I'm glad we can't go there. But we have to keep track of Sawbossu, what worlds he's conquered, and what his next move might be. How many probes do we have out now? Counting the ones we sent today, that brings the total to 30. I'll put the map on the screen. Sawboss destroys them as fast as he can find them, of course. But I can keep making them faster than he... What is it, Gillian? One of the probes seems to have picked up something unusual in Sector 7. I'll put it on the screen. It's terrible! All those worlds! Destroyed! Well, that's why we call them monster mines, Flower Face. There, look! It's clear! No monster mines anywhere! Impossible! Why, that planet's smack in the middle of an infested solar system. It should have been taken over long ago. Unless something stopped them. Audrey? It could be, Father. But even if it isn't, we've got to find out what it is. Maybe it's the answer we've been looking for. Uh, not that I'm questioning your judgment, of course, but uh, <laughs> you do realize this means going right into Sawboss's turf? Oh, well, that's good. Uh, I feel better knowing we know what we're doing when we're doing something I'll regret. never understand the beauty of desolation, the purity of plant life over everything else. Excellency, the Lightning League is coming this way into our domain. Finally, it has happened. The strain was too much for them. They have finally cracked. <laughs> now entering Monster Mine territory, in case nobody noticed. Now... How long do you think it'll be until we're noticed? I think they just noticed us. Ah! Fire lasers, close proximity, wide dispersion, now! of maneuvers! Too late! Just one chance. Electrify the hull. Got it. Here goes. Quite. They still have one left. Themselves. They're going to ram us. Not if I can help it. Hang on. head for that planet before they can regroup. Adjust our course, Herc. We shouldn't be far now. They are headed into Sector 7, and the one world we have not been able to subdue. Dispatch another attack squad, bigger than the last. They must be stopped. As you command, Excellency. Sensors picking up anything beneath the cloud layer? Nothing. I'm afraid we're being jammed. How or by what? I, I don't know. Only one way to find out. Take us down. What's happening? Everything looks different. And I feel so strange. Coming in faster than I thought. Ground's coming up fast. 
firing retros. We're gonna crash! Emergency lighting. Best we can do, kid. The pride's lost a lot of energy somehow. It is as I feared. What... what is it? It is the opposite of everything we know. I fear that we've entered a zone of anti-life. Anti-life? Like anti-matter? If this were anti-matter, we would have blown up as soon as we entered the atmosphere. Every living thing has power. The energy of life. Everything around us adds to that energy. But a place such as this takes energy, drains life steadily, slowly, lethally. Could anything live in a place like this? I just saw something! A, a face! It was horrible! I think that answers your question, kid. And we've got to find whoever or whatever lives here. If they created this and found a way to survive, they might be the key we've been looking for. Down a half energy hotshot. Better find something fast or we're gonna be stuck here. Understood. Keep a sharp eye out, everybody. Look! What, what, what happened to them? I don't know, and I don't care, as long as it doesn't happen to us. Looks like we don't have to find them. They found us. You will leave your base and come with us. The Dark Queen has sent for you. Yeah? Let's see how they give orders after this laser. No, Herc, wait. We came in friendship. Let's see what they have to say. the Dark Queen? I am. We have come here in search of my father and in peace, offering help in the hand of friendship. Certainly we'll accept your friendship. If you wish to accept the touch of the Dark Queen, the touch of peace. As to your offer, we are in need of nothing. The ones in need of help now are all of you. In coming here, you have doomed yourself and your friends. The anti-life in which we exist will drain your energy, and you will simply stop. You will be no more. There must be a way. Yes, there is one way out. Only the touch of the Dark Queen will bring you peace. In other words, disappearance from this world. Okay, kid, I'm cutting in the auxiliary power lines. No good, Herc. Power went up only a couple of degrees. Not nearly enough to get us off the planet. That's why the monster mines never survived. They couldn't make it off the planet. I'm going to see how Flora is. I'm worried. Yeah. Why don't you cheer her up? I'm going to go outside and check things out after this. How's it going, Gillian? Not well, I'm afraid. The vehicles are all down to half power and draining fast. Soon we lose everything. Power, lights. How's Flora? She just sits there. Poor child. Do the best you can, Gillian. You okay, Flora? Mm-hmm. You sure? Chase, is Brock really dead? I... I don't know. 
we, we still don't know the Dark Queen's true intention. Our spy satellite has achieved orbit around the planet, Excellency. But is it not possible the planet has destroyed them already for us? We will make certain the only way we can. Launch five! Stop poking me with your lance. I don't have any time to play now. Cut that! Oh. I would have gotten your attention myself, but I fear there would have been consequences. Right. Yeah, of course, gotcha. <laughs> sure. Kid, you better get down here. We got company. We have finished our observations of you. All is not as grave as it might be. Anti-life does not affect everyone the same. Some of you, stronger, more complex, will last longer. Even the rude one has surprising inner resources. Gee, thanks. Mm. Those of you who can survive are welcome to stay wherever you wish on this planet. We shall not disturb you. What about Brock? And what of my friends? They are simpler, smaller, weaker. There is only one thing for them. A touch of the Dark Queen. A touch of... No! Wait! We'll find our own solution. As you wish. Come on, let's get back to work. Flora, you all right? Monster Minds! They're here! Coming this way! All right, Herc, to your post. We'll stop them. Ow. All the vehicles, the weapons, they're all working at half power. Then we'll just have to fight twice as hard to make up for it. Master! Wait! I feel funny. Yeah, me too. Curious. I can barely maintain contact with the troopers. They're almost here. Let's go. Keep an eye on them, Flora. If there are more, let me know. Time for a little rain. Terrific, just terrific. Hmm. Weapon systems out, power reserves down. Just one thing to do. There's gotta be... That's it! Skid guns, do your stuff! Looks like the laser took nearly the last of our power, Oom. Um. Hmm? What, Master? Wait a minute. There's one power source that we still might be able to use. Ring of Light? Magic Might! Lightning Strike! Oon! Flora, are you okay? Flora? Flora! 
can you hear me? Everyone hurry. Jace, what is it, my boy? The anti-light. It's draining Un and Flora faster now. We've got to get to the castle. The Dark Queen might be holding something back from us, and I intend to find out what. Why have you come here? around us is draining the life from my friends. I've seen them weaken. You and your people survive here. How? We are used to this world, and so we can never leave. For your world would destroy us just as our world destroys you. I tell you again, there is only one escape from this place. Only the touch of the Dark Queen can bring you peace. Are you offering me death? We live in a world of anti-life. Therefore, I am offering you anti-death. <laughs> I see. So that's it. We've got to do it. We've got to let her touch us. Of course, my boy. You're right. What? You two have got to be out of your minds. There's no time to explain. And even if there was, I think... I think you'd have to trust me without explanation. Oh, good. The whole world's gone nuts. And what of you, little one? Where my master goes, I go. Then let it be done. We're ready. I'd ask you to tell me it won't hurt, but uh, <laughs> I never believe strangers anyway. Uh, and nothing personal, you understand? Am I... Did she... Are we... <laughs> yes and, and no. Oh, Brock, I was so worried. She was telling us the answer all the time. Brock knew what her true heart was by instinct. She lived in anti-life and offered us anti-death. And anti-death is the same thing as life. And as promised, here you may find peace. Long ago, when Sawboss attacked our solar system, we developed a plan. With our magic, we moved all incoming ships into another dimension a zone of anti-life. To get out again, you must pass our test. You must be selfless, must be willing to take chances, to use intelligence rather than force to find a solution. Sawboss and other evil forces cannot do this. Could you come with us then? No. It is our own magic. And what I told you was true. If we leave this zone, we will die. It is a small price to pay to save our world. Our offer still holds. You are safe now. Sawboss cannot reach you here. You may stay with our blessings. Thank you, but Sawboss is still out there and so is my father. We can't stop until our mission is complete. everyone let's go were you scared her me nah. i knew what was going on all along sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
stroke, and I'll be right back with one to grow on. Wait till you see what's coming from Honeycomb. 1984 Mini Metal License Plates. Free when you buy specially marked boxes of Honeycomb cereal. Awesome! 50 plates in all. And if your plate says lucky... Wow! Yeah! You win a new BMX bike, and 500 kids will win. For a free plate, write Post Honeycomb License Plates. P.O. Box 540, Lowell, Indiana, 46356. Go for it! against your parents. But it's the only way I'll ever get anyone to listen to me. Why? My dad just took my allowance away because my teacher told him I was throwing spitballs in class today. I didn't do it. But who's going to believe a kid against the teacher? It's hopeless. Boy, do I know the name of that pen. Trying to convince your parents that you're right and another adult is wrong is about as difficult as flying around the world without an airplane. At least that's what I used to think. But now I've found that if you're truly right and you honestly explain it to your parents, nine times out of ten, they'll understand. Instead of carrying on like this, why don't you talk to your parents and ask for a meeting with the teacher? You know, Ronnie, maybe that'll work. I know I'm right. Go for it, Ronnie. And that's one to grow on. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water... The shark is here. The ferociously good ice pop from Good Humor. The Good Humor shark has the great taste of natural grapes and a shocking shark shape. Mmm, delicious. The Good Humor shark is waiting for you in your supermarket freezer. Man, that would have been so cool. You could have win a, a jukebox or a bubble gum or a, a bubble gum, a bubble yum pinball machine back in the day. Entries must be received by December 31st, 1979. <laughs> that was a long time ago. There he is. Boom. One of my holy grail toys. I will own a ROM action figure one day. I own the uh, Mighty Mug, but I will one day own ROM action figure. Either the new one or the old one. I don't care. I'd like to have both, but yeah, I will own one one day. Uh, I, I made fun of my one of my buddies because he went. me and him were at a toy show, and he got there before I did, and he snagged the only ROM that was in the room before I, just before I got there. Because <clears throat> he wanted one, too. I can't fault him. I get it. So... All right, so I hope you like Jace. Yet again, I talk about the difference in animation. Look at Hammer Man, look at Action Man. Now look at Jace and the Wheeled Warriors. Now look at the one I'm going to show you now, which is Ulysses 31. The animation, there's almost over a 10 years difference. And the animation was better on the mid-80s, early 80s ones than the 90s ones. That's just sad and crazy. And I know why it's called Deke, called Do It Cheaper. Evidently, at a certain point, they became the go-to cheaper production, I guess. <clears throat> but yet, they still put out a ton of great cartoons. So, can you really wrong them at that point, then? So, here you guys go. This is episode 12 of Ulysses 31. <laughs> It is the 31st century. Ulysses killed the giant Cyclops when he rescued the children and his son Telemachus. But the ancient gods of Olympus are angry and threaten a terrible revenge. Mortals, you defy the gods? I sentence you to travel among unknown stars. Until you find the kingdom of Hades, your bodies will stay as lifeless as stone. Ulysses, the way back to Earth has been wiped from my memory. You are alive, my son.
finished those repairs yet? Oh, stop spinning around. It's getting on my nerves. Oh. What's broken? I hope you know that at least. It isn't really broken. That should do it. Power up. There we go. Power up. Power up, you sure? Now, just wait a second till I finish fixing my engine, and then I'll race you and win. Why do I always get gadgets that won't run? Speed machines, we have an understanding. I'm a robot. After all, we have a lot in common. Look! No living creature in the capsule. It is remote controlled. Repeat, no crew aboard. Analysis continuing. Father! Father! Out there, there's a strange sort of machine. Calm down, Telemachus. It's a Trident transport. Remote controlled. I've seen them before. It's probably empty. On its way back to the base of the gods. The base of the gods? Mm-hmm. Back to duty stations. We'll follow it and see where it leads us. It's dangerous. It's a trap set by the gods. That's possible. Quite possible, Yumi. Father, why should we take such a risk? Oh, dear, oh, dear. I'll be scared for the whole trip. They're unfair to robots. How can we fight the will of the gods? Do you know how long we've been in this space of Olympus? The gods want us to wander endlessly in space all our lives, to roam forever. Our companions are still not awake. Neither is Numenor. If we can follow that sphere, we may discover something about Olympus. And maybe discover the route back home to Earth? We have to take action to gain our freedom. Nothing is ever achieved without some effort. We must carry on the fight and be afraid of nothing. Have confidence and we will win. Now, do you understand? We have to try everything. We'll do our very best. For our companions and for my brother. It's our duty. We have to. <laughs> Good. Now, Shirka, follow that sphere. Trident transport vehicle is accelerating. Attention all crew, we are about to enter an unknown energy zone. The Sphere Trident Transport Vehicle about to penetrate zone. What? What is this? TTV still increasing velocity on the brink of crossing into a new dimension. This is the same space we discovered when we were near the galactic oceans of ice, remember? If it really is that space, it means we're on the route to Olympus. But that's the region of the gods. Should we do that? Lost all track of the Trident transport vehicle. Our speed is decreasing. It's just like jelly, kind of strange. Oh, it's the stairway of 
Olympus. very heart of Olympus. It's incredible, honestly, I can't believe my eyes. This is our limit of radius. Attempting to cross these obstacles is too dangerous. All right, Shirka, stop the Odyssey. We'll take the shuttle. We're going with you, Father. No, that's not possible, Telemachus. It's too dangerous. But before you told us that the only way, the only way to win our freedom is taking risks, take action and triumph over destiny. Well, yes, that's right. We have to act together. Telemachus is only following our advice. <laughs> to discover the route back to Earth and to save our unfortunate companions who become your playthings. Whoever you are, we shall not leave until we have found the secret. Your boldness will cost you dearly. are all traps. Wait, let me try something. No, no, give me one of your tools. I'll throw it on one and we'll see what happens. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Always the same thing. It's on a light-colored web. Right. We didn't fall into that trap. You must never judge by appearances. Follow me. Take precisely my path. closely at the fate of these poor men. See, Ulysses, what will be your fate if you go on defying us? Don't move, children! Even in 
death. You will find no peace. Until I have found the route back home to Earth, I will go on looking for it. I will not hesitate. You cannot stop me. You are wrong, Ulysses. You will regret it. Father! Stay close to me. I'll never manage to open it.
Telemachus. You mean? Ulysses, you are the first man who has ever succeeded in coming this far. Just who are you? Why do you hide yourself? <laughs> we are everywhere and nowhere. <laughs> our power is unlimited. Nothing escapes our knowledge. What sort of joke is this? If you choose the one on the left, you will learn the route back to your earth. But wait, if you choose the one on the right, you regain your children. Now, what have you done to my children? Ulysses, look. children on the left freedom and the earth on the right the children choose ulysses i can't do it even for my companions even to rid them of their curse i cannot sacrifice the children We expected you to choose that one, but that armchair you are sitting in is also the chair of forgetfulness. You will forget everything. The children, your companions, the earth itself, everything. No, let me go! The children, the earth will all be gone from your mind. You will no longer want to go home. You will no longer defy the gods. No! Forget. Never. We are the three fates. We are the goddesses who rule the destiny of men. Each thread is the destiny of one man. He is born. He lives. Go to sleep, forget everything, the earth, everything. No, I will never forget. <laughs> These threads stretch all the way to earth, an earth that you will never see again. Oh, 
What are we doing here? We are back in the garden of the Odyssey. It's not possible. Oh. But it was all a dream? No, I don't believe it. I can't believe it was just a dream. Father! No, it was not a dream. Oh. There was a time when you could join the IC Club of America, where you could go to your get license. Oh man, you got memberships include an IC Bear Cup T-shirt, uh, an uneatable IC Flying IC, your membership certificate, a numbered plastic membership card, an IC Bear magnet, four of them, certificates worth a hundred Bear points. Uh, coupon for a free IC, a new IC Bear Treasure list, Bear Facts newsletter, and a special IC Treasure offers. And it was $10 one time club fee. Man. So, yeah, yeah, you could have got that. I'm just saying. Y'all, did anybody, was anybody ever remember that? Was it worth it? Just saying. <laughs> What'd you get? So, I hope you guys dig Ulysses 31, because we're going to keep on going to one of the best, one of the better cartoons, one of the, one of what I call one of the big ones, um, that's Mask, uh, yes, I know everybody hates Team Bob, I get it, everybody loves telling me how much they hate Team Bob, it's fine, we all do, we all hate Orko, we all, well, you know, I say everybody hates Orko, but I have two people come to my shop that love Orko, just saying, uh, I hate I hate Fuzz. I think he's one of the worst sidekicks ever. I didn't even find Snarf that bad. So, just say it. I I will go deathbed. Fuzz is the worst sidekick ever. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> but this is Mask episode thirty four. Peril in Paris. <laughs> Mask! 
I don't see why we've got to get up at the crack of dawn just to see a bunch of paintings. Yeah, before your dad gave him that painting, we could look at it any time we wanted to. <laughs> the least we can do to thank him is give you all a special tour before the Louvre becomes crowded. Yeah, but I want to see the Eiffel Tower. Huh? What the? Huh? huh? Ooh, what happened? All the paintings have been turned around. All right. This is even better than the Eiffel Tower. Hmm. Who could have gone to the trouble to do such a thing? I think the more important question is why. I'm trying to figure out how they got in. Scott! What? You think they're still around? Well... Would you take Scott and T-Bob on to the Eiffel Tower? There's something fishy going on around here. If there's trouble, I don't want them mixed up in it. The only way you can guarantee to keep them out of it is put them in a cage. But I'll do my best. Okay, guys. Next stop, the Eiffel Tower. Eh? Huh? The Eiffel Tower? All right! <laughs> the same there. So that must be the end of the Boulevard Saint-Michel. Dagger, what are you doing? This one doesn't fit any place I can find. That's because you've got it upside down, you cretin. Even you should be able to see that. The... Jigsaw puzzle got you stumped. Mayhem. These are the last of them. Give them here. I still don't see why we couldn't have taken some of those paintings last night while we were in there. I mean, we could get millions for some of them. What we could get is caught if the police started searching Paris for art thieves. With what we're gonna make off this, we could buy the Louvre and everything in it. Drax, Vanessa, why would we want to buy a bunch of paintings? That's it! That's where the triggering device is hidden. Dagger, I want you to get that triggering device and get it fast. Right. It'll only be a matter of time before someone catches on. <laughs> Uh, this street is here, so... Boy, it's certainly nice to be driving Hondo's Hurricane. Buddy, are we at the Eiffel Tower yet? Just a little bit more, I think. Right, T-Bob? Uh, uh, let's see. Buddy, can we stop there, please? Huh? It's not like you didn't have breakfast. Yeah, but that was a half hour ago. I don't believe it. Here you go. Thanks. Let me have a look at that map, T-Bob. I got the feeling we're nowhere near the Eiffel Tower. Oh, I can get us there. I know just where it is from here. Venom. 
Yeah, it's Venom, all right. I know our old pal Dagger anywhere. <laughs> Somehow that doesn't surprise me. I found something, too. Look, Matt, I'd like to go in and have a look around. Okay, I'll join you as soon as I can. Just get Scott and T-Bob out of there. Check. If you guys think you can find the Eiffel Tower by yourselves, your dad's got a little job for me. Is it anything we can help with? Every time you say, let's help, it's us that end up needing the help. Let's just go find the Eiffel Tower. With you reading the map, we really are going to need help. can't stand to cover up such a handsome dude, but here goes. Crying shame, that's what it is. played that card. That was last hand. No, it wasn't. You just took my queen with it. Can't you slobs do anything except cheat each other at penny ante? Now what? I told you to get that thing. I forgot the map. You forgot the map? You'd forget your head if it wasn't nailed on? Who'd notice? Hurry up! You've wasted enough time around here! Huh? Hey! What am I doing in here? got all day. Wait! Wait! Where'd he go? When I get him, I'm gonna... After him! He's a spy! He saw the map! Get him! Stiletto on! Time to retire. It's Mask. They're on to us. We have to put our plan into action now, or we've lost the whole show. Well, I 
couldn't let them get the drop on you. You're never going to guess what I saw in there. This? Huh? How did you get that? So what's with the map? I put it together the same way Mayhem did, off the backs of 20 paintings in the Louvre. What? Take a look. During World War II, the French resistance hid those paintings so that Hitler would not take them. During the German occupation of Paris, Hitler planted a network of bombs under the city in the sewers. He planned to blow up Paris if the Allies should try to march in. The bombs were to be triggered from a distance by this device, a shortwave radio trigger hidden in a sealed bunker. It's an ancestor of our own remote control. A member of the resistance learned of the locations of the bombs and wrote them down on the backs of the hidden paintings. Why do you do that? It was probably the only thing they had available to make the notes on at the time. The device was never found. And after the war, the whole thing was forgotten. And that's what Venom's looking for. That's right. And if they find it first, they'll have the city of Paris in the palm of their dirty hands. this triggering device? The same place that Venom used to get into the loop, in the sewers of Paris. According to the computer, the triggering device was hidden in a sealed bunker, somewhere in this area. Then let's move it, Matt. Ugh! It's Venom! Not so fast, Matt. Where there's rats, you're going to find the cheese. I think you've been hanging around Bruce too long. A persistent rat. Now where'd he go? They say sweets for the sweet. Oh. So here's a little scum for the scum. The Eiffel Tower's right around here someplace. That's what you've been saying for the last half hour. Wait a minute, T-Bob. All right! This must lead into the sewers. We can go exploring. Not on your disk drive. It's dark in there. be around here. Oh, let's go someplace else and radio your dad. By then it may be too late. And besides, he may need our help. He may need our help? This is it. Now I can destroy Paris at the touch of a button. Venom. Don't lose them now. Okay, not a chance. Yeah, can you hear me? I 
found Switchblade. It's parked by Storm Drain down here by the river. Scott, listen to me. Get out of there right now. That's an order. Go to the Eiffel Tower where it's safe. Is that clear? Yes, but you heard him, didn't you? Let's get out of here and go to the Eiffel Tower where it's safe. Buddy, follow me. I know where Mayhem's coming from. We can still head them off. Attention, people of Paris. This is Venom. There are bombs planted under your city in the sewers. You have one hour to pay me one billion dollars or the city will be reduced to rubble. You will never find and defuse all the bombs in time. Scott, hurry up! Hey, look at that! down from here! That should hold it for a while. You won't catch me this time! Buddy, I can't hold them much longer. If they get away, we'll never catch them in time to keep them from blowing up the city. We've only got one chance. Now I'll ground you for good. Dad! Penetrator mask on! Huh? The triggering device is gone! That's because we've got it! Vanessa, Frax, Dagger, we're getting out of here! Go after a mask! Don't let him get away! No, no, come back! Let them get away! Whoa! Right. We'll take care of Venom later. Take her down, buddy. Okay, Matt. Spectrum hang glider on. You should have gone after him. We'd have been okay. Knowing Venom, I'm sure we'll have another chance. So, that's it. The bombs have all been found and defused, the Eiffel Tower's been repaired, and the triggering device is just another curiosity in the Paris War Museum. We still have a couple of days left in Paris. Is there anything else you want to see? Uh, I'd kind of like to see the Casbah. The Casbah? Let me see that map of yours, T-Bop. No wonder you had such a hard time finding the Eiffel Tower. What you've got here is a map of Algiers, not Paris. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Well, there wasn't any damage except to your lab, Scott. Boy! If I hadn't had the fire department number right where I could find it, there sure would have been. Secret Raiders, who will neutralize to the day arrive? Star Trek is gonna leave the mission. Spectrum's got such supervision. <laughs> Is the mighty power that can save the day? Mass. No one knows what lies.
Comico books for the simple fact is is that it's really easy to get all of them for next to nothing. I have all of the um, Grendels with um, uh, oh god the girl Grendel. Why can't I'm drawing a blank on her name right now? Christine Spar. There we go. And then all of Justice Machine. I have all those. And I bet you I did not spend ten dollars to get every book. And and they're good reads. So if you like comics, man, you can't go wrong. They're cheap. They're good reads. They're win-win. Just saying. So I hope you guys dig mask because we're gonna keep going to the other. Uh, you know, I, I say mask because we got M A S K. So now we're going to cops. C O P E. Uh, so we're going to cops. Central Organization of Police Specialists uh, with BP Vest because, you know, you know, isn't it obvious? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, one of the better things about cops was um, they tried to show you that reform could happen. Uh, they tried to show you, you know, they tried to make the police come off as the good guys because... You know, in an era when the police weren't always the good guys, you know, you have the issues. Um, but man, they, they tried. And I dug cops, still do. I think it's a fun cartoon, great character, God, great character designs. So, I mean, the police force, even if you think police force is going to be pretty basic, they, they give them police, you know, personality, give their characters personality, give the designs personality. Bad guys always had good personality. That goes back to, you know, G.I. Joe and stuff like that. You always, you always went crazy with the bad guys. Um, but, man, I think they did a great job with cops. So, this is Cops, episode 14, and this is Case of the Thieving Robots. Yes. Fighting crime in a future time. Protecting Empire City from Big Boss and his gang of crooks. Robots. Cops file 
6614. It was one of the sneakiest plans Big Boss ever devised. Crime should never be child's play. But Big Boss stopped at nothing. He even used toys to commit his robberies. Here's how the caper came down. That's it, my little friend. Find me a treasure. Don't crowd me, Bug Bomb. I told you a million times I couldn't make the robot toy look like you. The cops would recognize it from your wanted poster. The dresser. Try the dresser. One of my finest inventions, possibly the finest. I wish I'd made you this wonderful bulb bomb. <laughs> you did delightfully evil work. Now run along back to your little owner before she finds you missing. Don't forget to keep a lookout for more treasures. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Bad Vibes. Your crime toy works splendidly. I told you they were the perfect way to commit perfect crimes. Well, don't waste another hour. Put those other toys to work. Immediately. Oh, and keep making more. Got it, Big Boss. <laughs> Why should I give you a steel wool cookie? What have you stolen for me lately? I don't get it, mainframe. How can there be a burglary with no signs of a forced entry? That's what happened. The diamond necklace just disappeared. What's more, that's the fifth mysterious robbery in that same sector. And the phone just keeps on ringing. 647th Precinct, cops. This is Long Arm O'Malley here. It's Brian, Dad. Will you make it home in time for some of my birthday cake? Wouldn't miss it for the world, son. Great. Mom wants to talk to you. Don't forget Brian's birthday present, Long Arm. No problem, Linda. Love you both. We've got two more robbery reports coming in. Whoever's pulling off these crimes never takes anything large, just small, valuable items. And none of the families robbed ever sees a burglar. Hmm, something very curious is going on here. Longarm, you and Sundown start by checking out the theft of that diamond necklace. Huh? So your door was locked and there's no way to get in a window. That's a cute robot you got there. I bet my son would like one. I can't figure this out, Sundown. Me neither. It's like no robbery I've ever seen. Let me off here. I'm gonna get Brian one of those robot toys for his birthday. Cake smells terrific, Mom. Careful, Brian. You know that leprechaun belonged to your father's great-grandfather. He'd be upset if you broke it. Sorry, Mom. I was just checking it out. Sure is goofy looking. 
Don't tell your father, but I've always thought so too. Like you know, we hardly like ever get real live cops around here. What can I do for you? These robot toys seem to be pretty popular. Oh yeah, they're the hottest. The robotically raddest. They're like to die for. Isn't it just like solid state great? The ultimate friend and play toy. My son would flip over this. I'll take it. And it's on sale. Wonderful nightshade. Even the cops' kids want our thieving robots. This caper just keeps getting better. <laughs> Happy birthday, Brian! Wow! Thanks, Dad. This is the best. I think he likes you too. I think I'll call him Rocky. Rocky the robot. That's the precinct. I'll have to go. Crime fighting time already, Dad? Sorry, Brian. Ah, uh, that's okay, Dad. You can drop me off at my school meeting, Longarm. We'll see you after work, son. Be careful and don't let any strangers in. I know, Mom. See you later. One microchip for the homing device, and one for the nasty criminal habits. They are not stupid robots, Buzz Bomb. Old Chip for Brains is just jealous. Are you talking to me? I'll teach you. Knock it off, you nitwits. Save it for the cop. You know better than that, Buzz Bomb. Back to work. Crimes are wasted. <laughs> Get out of here! 
here and tell my dad about this. Whoa! You're wrong, little boy. You won't tell anyone about this. My father's a cop, and when he gets a hold of you... The cops won't dare interfere when I have you, Captain. You'll never get away with this bubble brain. Silence, little one. Buzz bomb, come here. See if you can make yourself useful for once. Keep an eye on our intruder. The robot toys are much more useful out stealing. Guarding prisoners is more your line of work. Just do what I say, you miserable mess of microchip. Sundown, have you noticed the one thing in common with all the burglary victims? What's that, Bart? These robot toys. They have something to do with all this. Long on, this is bulletproof. I want you to prepare yourself for some serious news. Long on, Brian is missing. I got home and he was gone. The Jade Leprechaun was gone too. What are we going to do? How about his new robot toy? No sign of it. It was the robot, Linda. They're what's behind this rash of robberies. I'm sure of it. We've started an intensive search for Brian, Longarm. No luck yet. If we can find where those robots come from, we'll find my son. And time for phase two of my thieving robots plan. Yeah. Robot armies almost at full strength. Soon it'll be time to burglarize all of Empire City. Sundown, slow down. Over there. We finally spotted one. Follow that robot. I'm afraid we lost the little critter. Sundown, that's Brian's skateboard. Dr. Bad Vibes, the super criminal. My dad talks about him all the time. My dad agrees with you. He said Bad Vibes is an evil, mean-spirited, good-for-nothing bad guy. I can't understand what you're saying. Well, maybe I can understand some of it. Dr. Bad Vibes always picks on you, doesn't he? You should tell him to pick on someone his own size. What do you mean I should pick on someone my own size? Great molten microchips. One more bleep out of you and I'll replace your circuit boards. No, you won't show me who's boss. Now, as soon as I'm done here, I'm reprogramming you. You're letting me go? Won't you get in trouble? Thanks, Buzz Bomb. You're all right. The computer map shows those ducks run all over Empire City, Longarm. Long arm, I found something. Huh? Look, string. That's my boy Brian. He marked his trail. Come on. Berserko, you're putting the heads on backwards. Jeez, sorry, Dr. Bad Vibes. If you want wrongdoing done right, you got to wrongdo it yourself. Like 
my innocence with me. I saw you helping the boy. Bazooka, stop them. Don't need my help. We sure do, Sundown. Dr. Bagbots has hundreds more robots in the toy factory. Come on! Hang on a sec. I'm gonna do what you should have done before you set out on this wild adventure, Brian. Call for help. Bulletproof. We need backup at the abandoned toy factory in grid 188. Come on, team! It's crime fighting time! to me, Buzz Bomb. Haven't I always been like a father to you? <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't paying enough attention to you, but crime is a serious business. <laughs> Emerald brooch. Missing two days. Tier 128. Check. I guess I shouldn't have gone off to chase Rocket like that, huh? I should have called you. It was a pretty dumb thing to do. You better leave crime fighting to the cops, son. At least until you're a little older. It was still a brave thing to do. And we're proud of you for helping us catch Dr. Bad Vibes. So, from all of us... Happy birthday! He's gone straight! All the robot toys are going to be changed into honest toys. Who'd you get to fix them? A real expert. With a lot of time on his hands. All the stolen objects were returned to their rightful owners. And for the remainder of his jail term, Dr. Bad Vibes did some good for once. Cops file 66414, the case of the thieving robots. Case closed. Cops, roll call. Highway, mainframe, long arm, Bowser and Blitz, sundown, hardtop, mirage, Bullseye, Mace, Barricade, and they call me Bulletproof. 
These are Empire City's most wanted crooks. Berserko. Rock Crusher. Misdemeanor. Turbo Two-Tone. Dr. Bad Vibes. Nightshade. Use caution in apprehending. figures each sold separately from Mattel. Pat Broderick was working on this one. That was probably right after he left uh, um, Firestorm. Bart Sears did the cover. He did the character designs for so much of this. And if you can go to Bart Sears' website, you can get, at one point, I don't know if they're still available, they may be sold out, but you could get uh, like reprints of his original sketches that he did for the cops characters so yeah i don't know if they're still available but you might go check them out <clears throat> but we're going to keep on going to another ip that you all really love but some of you hate this cartoon that is captain n the game master i absolutely cove captain n the game master i think it's a little weird that they decided to make game boy a character uh, man, they should just gave it so that he carried a Game Boy around like a like a tricorder, like hooked on his belt. You know, because you you had a belt hook on your old school gray brick Game Boy. Uh, you got about 15 minutes of battery life, no matter how many batteries you put in there. You could you got about 15 minutes if you were lucky. Uh, every kid wanted the stupid adapter, but that defeated the purpose of a Game Boy. Uh, I remember buying, I remember getting one later and then getting the good rechargeable batteries so I could just keep putting rechargeable batteries into my Game Boy uh, until basically they would stop working because you drain the life of a Game Boy, or of a rechargeable battery, which when I was a kid didn't know you could do. You wear out. I wore out rechargeable batteries with my Game Boy. <laughs> Completely wore them out, so... Uh, but on that note, this is Captain N, the Game Master, and this is the big game. Mother disappeared, and Mother Brain tried to take over Video Land. Her only hope lay in an ancient prophecy that a great warrior from another world would come to our rescue. I admit, I was a bit skeptical when Captain showed up. But now, I don't know how we'd ever get along without him. In the robotic world of Megaland, the evil Dr. Wily is deep inside Skull Castle, cooking up mega trouble for Captain N and his friends. My new power vacuum is a work of pure genius, if I do say so myself. What does it do? It harnesses the greatest source of power in all video land. Competition energy, generated from playing games. <laughs> Never heard of it. Of course not. I just discovered it. Allow me to demonstrate. All right, metal man. Oh. Ah! Don't blow your stem egg plant. All you have to do is defeat metal man. Ah! Ah! Pure condensed competition energy. As long as they compete, they give off invisible energy. And the power vacuum sucks it right up. Stop that magic! So you have a bottle full of competition energy. So what? 
If I can get this much energy from one robot and that idiotic vegetable of yours, think what I can get from Captain Litlet and his pals. I'm gonna turn his love of games into a trap that'll send him and his whole end gang into the earthquake zone. I like it! What a gloom a kiss. I think he's homesick for that California place. This old mega cheer, Captain Anna. Wow, dude, skaters roll. All right. Cool, did you make this Mega Man? Just like you told me, Mondo knows. Mondo knows does not compute. Please read it to Delta. Princess? <laughs> you ninnies are gonna game yourself <gasps> right into the earthquake warp zone. I really like gagging me with a spoon. Time to begin. How am I doing? New group, the Ungrateful Undead. Darn, that's my favorite song. Oh, that getting on this totally tribute of offer. Send the tickets for a rad day on California Games World. It's like so much fun. Just this week, me the name of California's most gnarly valley. Hey, I know that. The San Fernando Valley. Yeah, dude. Oh, way to go. Tickets, that's even one for Duke. <laughs> of course. I wouldn't want you to leave that mangy mutt behind. All right, line up. Time to get moving. <laughs> Captain Nitwit's gonna be one sorry California dude. <laughs> Unaware of Dr. Wily's evil plan, the M-Team arrives on the sunny world of California games. Hey, this is cool. Just like being back home. <laughs> okay, dudes and dudette, surf's up. Geronimo! <laughs> oh, I'm so glad Kevin's happy again. That means he'll stay with us a little longer. I certainly hope not. Oh, Simon, we're on vacation. Let's just have fun. for me to knock you right into the earthquake zone. Because thanks to my new map of video lens, I can open and shut both zones at will. <gasps> Just as soon as all these energy jars are full, time to up the competition a little. Go to it, I love it. doing here? They're from Megaland. I don't know, but they're not going to make a clown out of me. Who 
Wonderful! My lovelies are doubling the energy. I'll be full to capacity in no time flat. <coughs> Our vacation is turning into a real bummer. The games just aren't fun anymore. No, 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 don't stop. I need more energy. <laughs> I guess I'll have to switch to my backup plan. It'll use up some energy, but at least I can put my warp zone shifter through a little test run. <laughs> this will keep them on California world for as long as I want. I don't believe it. What's that? Wow. Huh? Northridge High. That's my school. Hey, aren't you that video game wizard who helped me study for my algebra test? Hi, Stacy. You remembered. It was just that one time, and when I asked you for a date, you were busy, but. Your name's Kerwin, right? <laughs> no, Kevin. Kevin Keen. And I'm Simon Belmont, Vampire Hunter, at your service. <gasps> you hunt vampires? Yo, now I remember, you're on the Junior Varsity Swim Team, right? And you're Rick Walker, captain of the Varsity Football Team. Hey, welcome to Video Land. Yeah, right, Video Land, and I'm the King of California. <laughs> huh? Welcome, Your Majesty. I am Princess Lana. And if I'm dreaming, don't wake me up. It's no dream. I don't know how you got here, but you're here. But this doesn't make sense. A minute ago, we came out of the gym for Saturday football practice. Now we're at the beach. I've got a feeling mega trouble's coming, Captain Ann. Uh, who's Captain Ann? Is Joker in the fairy wings? <laughs> of course not. Kevin is Captain Ann. That's, that's kind of the nickname they gave me around here. Some kind of joke. If it is, the joke's definitely on us. <gasps> uh -huh. <gasps> Those love nuts were just a nuisance before, but now they're getting downright nasty. Man, you're sure not the Kevin Keen I remember. Uh, I, I think we'll be safer inside. Whoa. I think maybe you're right. Let's move it, guys. Get the Palace of Power and the Throne of Videoland. 
I know you've got some dirty trick up your sleeve, Wily. We won't play, no way! Oh, yes, Ray. <laughs> I'll give you five minutes to think it over. Well, be right. Perhaps you'd like a little entertainment. Stick close, ladies. I'll take care of you. Their adorablenesses don't need you to take care of them when Simon Belmont's around. You're both so galant. Which one should we choose, Lana? <laughs> Be my guest. Take both of them. Let go! I had it first. You let go! Without a helmet again, Romeo. Where are we gonna run to? Uh, let's crunch him! How? Those robo props have got us outmanned and outpowered. Captain Ant will know what to do. Uh, no computer whip on a tiddlywink squad is gonna tell me what to do. It's the swim team, dude. Well, la dee da. How'd you earn this? Doing a belly flop? <laughs> hey, chill, will you? the best from your world, and the ultimate warp zone chose Kevin as our game master. <laughs> okay, Keen. A good quarterback knows when to fall back. Let's see what all that video game playing taught you. It's your call. Well, I, I say we fight. Only let's play a game we have a chance of winning. Football! <laughs> Just a few moments more, and they'll all be mine. What happened? When do we blast the loser's team into the earthquake zone? As soon as those engines start playing again! I don't want any slip-ups! Trust me, when the jaws are full, the warp zone shift up will shut down every warp on California world but one. This one, <laughs> right here in this hot dog stand. So while they're running around here looking for a warp door out of here, we'll be long gone. Just remember, we only got 60 seconds from the time I blow this whistle. Captain Numbskull, what'll it be? Play or pay? Come on, we better get out of there before the Brain Lord blows a gasket. Helmets on! Mm. Kevin, I just want you to know, whatever happens, I think you're terrific. Ah, uh, thanks, Stace. <laughs> Come on, Lana. We can do a cheer while the boys play ball. <laughs> no, thank you, Stacy. I'm gonna see what Dr. Wiley's really up to. I, I better tell Game Boy to keep an eye on her. She could get in trouble. I hope that means you're gonna keep your eye on the game. Promise you'll be careful, Lana. I will. You too, okay? Okay, Wiley, we play. But only if it's our game. Football! Whatever you say, Captain N. Oh, I forgot to tell you. <gasps> I'll be sending in my first string this time. Gee, I hope I know enough cheers. I knew you explained football to them, Kevin, but are you sure they understand? Well, look on the bright side, Simon. At least we won the toss. Give me your
there, guys. Hey, don't take it so hard, kid. We're holding our own. Well, that's not good enough. I've got a better idea. Mega Man, do you think you can make it back to Megaland and bring back some firepower from Dr. Wright? I can sure make a try. Well, boy, looks like you're our eighth man. <laughs> With your game moves and our grid eye, we can't lose. Well, then let's do it. Chasing things as much as Duke does. What in Video Land is Wally up to now? Oh, whatever it is, he's not gonna get away with it if I can stop him. And I will! I can use a lift about now. Whoa! This is what I call on the job training! said once before. It comes from the landfill warp zone. <laughs> Maximus Stinkus, that's where all the garbage in Video Land ends up. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Are we going to the landfill zone too? Don't worry, Dr. Wally's warp shifter just shifted into reverse. You're going home. Die money! Later dudes. You're coming back with us, right? Come on, Kevy, what are you waiting for? Not this time. I don't blame you, Captain N. I'll never forget this. Look me up when you get back. They will, you know. Will what? Forget. It's automatic. Well, so will you, when you go back. Well, well, we won't have to worry about that for, for a long time, will we, Duke? Kevin, are cheerleaders chosen from the nobility where you come from? Uh, not exactly. Well, you seem very impressed with this Stacy. Oh, well, I used to be, until I met you. Well, then life got twice as cool and, and ten times as exciting.
He's the black and blueberry baby. <laughs> blueberry Hubba Bubba. Starts soft, stays soft. You can imagine in the future, giant robot-controlled warriors will protect the planet Earth. Starion! The star your wasters and cosmeter each sold separately. Wasters? Hot cosmeter? Uh-oh! It's the cosmeter! Cosmeter. Batteries not included. A remote control star that you can control. Activate the waster force field. Fire disc! The wasters and cosmeter each sold separately with its own comic book. Part of the star collection. New from Tomy. All right, I hope you guys dig Captain N still. I know I do. I like it. It's a fun comic book. Fun, fun comic book. It was a comic book. It was through Valiant. So if you can go find it. I do have my uh, uh, trade paperback. I do not have it. That trade paperback is not cheap. Uh, but I have no originals of that stuff. So, yeah. I guess if you find them, man. If you ever find any of the Valiant... Uh, um, Nintendo stuff. <clears throat> if it's cheap at a garage sale, flea market, you jump on it. Holy crap! If it's in good shape, it's never going to go down because there's just it's there's not many of them out there. Um, a lot of them were just put in with like game systems and consoles and stuff. So that was the only way you could get them. But uh, we're going to keep it going. We're going to give you one more. There's no bonus today because. Uh, like last week, I did all every, all thirteen episodes, all thirteen shows. I'm doing all thirteen shows, all Deek, and uh, we're bringing you pole position, um, as I call it, uh, the mask uh, predecessor, uh, the proto mask. Um, yet again, why there was never toys? Why no one has still ever never made toys? The fact they're going back and making toys from cartoons and stuff that came out forty years ago, now is really cool but they need to take some of these ones that were never made you know we finally got dungeons and dragons toys recently that were based on the cartoon uh which we got the hasbro ones and now we're getting the super seven ones which i personally as a store never got my second wave i'm looking at you hasbro so <clears throat> but now super seven's got them and i'm like no i'm not doing that again i'm not gonna go from a 20 dollar figure to a uh, 60 dollar figure not doing it not doing it at all but on that note here you go this is pole position this is episode 10 and this is to clutch a thief hard driving action today with the pole position team as they set out to clutch a thief Well, 
that's one burger that just got burned. You two stay put. That's no fun. Hey! Safety is more important than fun, Daisy. Wheels, sometimes you act just like a grown-up. Grab him, Dan! Are you ever a disgrace to your uniform? Sis. Hello, Dan and Tess. It's Uncle Zachary. I hope the morning finds you rested, because I've got an assignment for you. Oh, not now. You've got a terrific sense of timing, Uncle Zach. When do we get a time out? Sorry, but there isn't any time, Dan. You'll have to make time, Uncle Zach, because I'm not up to any more adventures today. This is one assignment you'll like, Tess. It's the Queen's Pageant. Now that's what I call an assignment. How about letting me in on it? The Queen's Pageant is held every 25 years, Daisy, in Beverlywood. Beverlywood? But that's our old hometown. Years ago, our grandma was the Queen. Then it was Mom's turn. Mom did it? Now it's your turn, Tess. My turn? It's a matter of family honor, and it would mean a lot to me if you'd do it. You're on, Uncle Zachary. Hooray! We're going home! Home. What a two-bit hometown. A little two-bit peace and quiet sounds pretty nice about now. What's that? It's the steamboat. After the big parade, everybody takes a ride on it. And look there, Daisy. It's our old house. I remember all of us there with Mom and Dad. You okay, honey? Yeah. Oh, thanks, Kuma. City Hall, all out for the coronation. This hasn't seen the light of day in 25 years, but it's still fit for a queen. And what a queen you've grown up to be, Tess. I'll say. Well, I just hope you've got lots of policemen on duty to keep an eye on this little trinket. You've been in too many big cities, Dan. In Beverlywood, trust counts more than a badge. Sounds like my kind of place. 
We've got costumes for all of you. Go into the next room and slip them on. Tess! Kathy! Kathy Grimes! Kathy and I were born on the same day and we're best friends ever since. Oh, your sister loved adventure even when she was a little girl. I've kept tabs on you, Tess. What an exciting life you lead. There's a lot to be said for the peace and quiet you've got right here, Kathy. Are you kidding? I've worked in a chicken farm for five years. Sometimes I think if I see another feather, I'll scream. I'd give anything to trade places with you, Tess. Anything at all. Sorry to break up the chit-chat, Your Highness, but the pageant awaits. It's the Queen. You know how I feel about that, Spencer. And if you had the least bit of sensitivity, you'd know better than to mention it to me. Why can't I ever do anything right? Queen Tess. And look how we end up. Well, if the hat fits. Don't be such a joker, Rhodey. You know, Daisy, I wouldn't mind settling down here. But what about the stunt show? Maybe it's time I tried something calmer, with no unpleasant surprises. on the agenda. Come on! <laughs> something like that with a straight face. There's our man. Sorry, Rody, we can't take you into that crowd. Anytime, Kuma. We got him cornered. <laughs> Looks more like he's got us cornered. Any suggestions, guys? We need an elephant of our own wheels. One elephant coming up. It worked.
believe it or not, this is the first time I've ever written one of these things. to speak of. Hey, Tess, look. It's the balloon from the parade. Wrong. It's a number one elephant catcher, right, Tess? Right. Elephant catcher? What do you mean? <laughs> that should take the fight out of him. Can it be fixed? It doesn't matter, Daisy, because this is a fake. for me, Rody. Okay, Tess. Got it. It's a glucose base combined with sodium chloride and emulsifiers. This is getting more confusing by the minute. Uh, pardon me, but did, did somebody just come through here? Why, no. Say, don't I know you? Why, you're little Danny Darrett, all grown up. You used to come round here for gumballs. <laughs> yeah, right. You always had a dog with you, even then. <coughs> Here's a little something for your sweet tooth. It's candy fresh from the oven. Later, I plan to sell them as souvenirs of the pageant. Thanks a lot. Now I've really got to be getting a move on. Give my best to your sisters. Yuck. What was all that commotion, Ma? Nothing, Spencer. Just put the flower here. The state police have been notified, Tess. They'll be in town soon. I hope they do a better job than I did, Uncle Zack. I really blew it. Oh, it's not your fault, Tess. Well, look! It's the sightseeing boat. Now, why don't you come along for the ride? Might as well. We haven't got any clues anyway. There you guys are. Dan! Did you catch the crook? Nah, he gave us the slip. All we got out of it was some dessert. Here, shortstop. Thanks. Wait a minute. <laughs> Where'd you get this? In the candy shop. What difference does it make? Plenty. It's a dead ringer for the one the crook used to throw us off the track. Rody, repeat back the formula you gave me. Only this time, put it in English. Sure thing, Tess. The pieces you gave me were made of candy. Right. to take a rain check on that boat ride, Kathy. Come on, Dan. I thought you were tired of all this running around. I am. But nobody's gonna hold up my hometown and get away with it. Closed in the middle of the day? I wonder why. Can you tell if there's anybody home, Rody? I'm reading a moving heat source in the attic. Let's check it out. But how do we get in? If I can get a rope up to the roof, I might be able to slide down the chimney. Of course, I might land in an oven, but that's a risk I'll have to take. Or we could just try the doorknob. That was my next choice. Right. Better take me along. You never know when you'll need me again. <laughs> nice try, but you two stay here. Thanks a lot. The attic door's open now. And there's music coming from upstairs. How 
without telling us what that's doing here. I'm so ashamed. You've discovered my private little secret. Fifty years ago, there was a competition to select a queen for the pageant. Your grandmother won, and I lost. I wanted to be queen so badly, so I made this costume. And each time the pageant came round, I come up here and pretend. I'm really sorry for you, but that's still no excuse for robbery. Robbery? What are you talking about? This is a fake. See for yourself. No! Spencer! This is the real one, Ma. I stole it. But why? All my life you've told me how we were the losers. Well, now we've got the gold, and we're gonna keep it. He's not in his right mind. Tell me about it. You know the routine, guys. Burn rubber. You two are 
simply sensational. Now forget about that trade, Tess. After seeing you two in action, I realize your life would wear me out in a minute. That's okay with me, Kathy. Beverly Wood hasn't turned out to be the vacation I imagined either. You two are a couple of real heroes. From now on, we'd be proud if you thought of this town as your home. Thanks, Your Honor. But we've already got a home. On the road. You can get Spider-Man 300 for four dollars. Four dollars. <throat> you can get New Mutants one for three dollars and fifty cents. Um, you can get a uh, third print of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for seven dollars and fifty cents. Uh, wow. Um, Spider-Man, Soul Avengers, Turtles, Wolverine. Old X Men, you get them for like, yeah, they still look kind of pricey for that era, which is funny. But I don't know. I'm rambling. So I hope you guys had fun this weekend. I hope you liked the All Deek weekend. Um, I had fun putting this together. I did. I had fun putting the All Filmation one together. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I might just go back to normal next week. Just do a mix again. Maybe I'll come back with a... Down the road, I'll think of something else to make a block out of. Uh, like, I'll do the all action. And then I'll do, like, the all, like... Furry animal ones. So. <clears throat> but, I'm glad you guys had fun. I'm glad you guys hung out with me. Um, but I'm going to give the rundown, remember... Mondays at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, a lot of great stuff on Group Therapy TV. Uh, every Thursday at 8 p.m. You can watch Talk and Roll on the Talk and Roll channel. We're interviewing bands from all over the world. Some great bands here in the United States. Uh, we just did uh, one with a band out of Los Angeles, California. We're doing one with a band out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh very different sounds, both of them, both female fronted bands. Um, I may be bringing you Group Therapy TV after dark. So there may be an episode that will not air on Mondays at noon. It may be Mondays at 8 p.m. because uh, uh, adult situation. No, uh, uh, adult uh, discussions, I guess. So, uh, you know, I guess I can be a little more. I can't, I mean, this drops whenever you can just watch these whenever, but I don't know. Maybe I'll think about it. You guys tell me what you think. Should I change it from noon? If I do a, a, a kind of racy one from noon to eight or should I just leave it at noon? Cause I mean, you're all adults and, but we're going to have a, a really just, I got a really cool interview coming up. Uh, it's going to be a few weeks because they're, they're 
going to be gone for three weeks. When they come back, then we're going to do our interview. So it's going to be really, really fun. So, all right. And then we got Sci Friday, Saturday morning serials. You're here. You're going to watch them. So, you know. And then, remember, I got this still. We're at about 13,000 subscribers. We hit 15,000 subscribers. I am giving this big monster away. This, like, four-pound monster. This $60 book. I will be giving that away to one lucky fan. We hit 15,000 subscribers. So tell your friends, your family, uh, your postman, your milkman, uh, the guy that works down the street at Speedway. You tell him that they need to watch Saturday Morning Serials, Group Therapy TV, and Sci Fridays, and Talk and Roll. Uh, so they can have fun watching your, watching cartoons like it was back in the day. And uh, so uh, another big announcement. We, are, we have booked some guests for Piqua Comic Con, June 22nd and 23rd in Piqua at the Knights of St. John Hall. Um, I can't say yet. Um, they're lower people, but they're people that have been in movies, been on TV, uh, stuff like that. So we just got to cross the T's and dot the I's now and make sure we get everything locked in. But, you know, like every convention, card is subject to change. Um, so we're working on all that fun stuff. I'm booking guests now, getting ready for June and, uh, hopefully this will be the best one we've had. Um, so we're really trying hard with this one. Uh, so, <sighs> and, um, I just want to say thank you to all you guys. You're here every Saturday morning. You're here every Friday night. You're here even during the weekdays when I'm here. Um, you guys are always having fun with me. You guys are always hanging out. You guys, you guys are here taking care of things when I can't. Uh, you know, Autumn, Johnny Wayne, uh, freaking Maddie Bot, Nufi, um, Black Phoenix, um, forty one zero fifty four, uh, Channel. Uh, geez, so many guys are having fun in 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 the in the streams. Um, you know, Captain gets up on Saturdays. I get up. I got stuff to do. I get around. And by, I'm on here for a little bit of time. And then I got to go to work. Uh, so by the time my show is ending, uh, I'm actually already at work working. So I still got to get there, get lunch, and then get to work. So I, I'm too busy for even for my own show. <laughs> but you're here. And I love you guys for that. Um, I mean it. You guys are fun. Um you know, I, I, I want to say hey to everybody. I want to say, you know, Timothy, you know, you know, Mo, uh, Rabbit, Swamp. So many of you guys are so awesome. And you're all awesome. So I think I say so many of you. So, all you guys are awesome. You're all sitting here watching this. And um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you a lot. And on that note, I'm going to say Captain Out. Uh, take care, and I'll see y'all there. Bye. This Saturday morning marked the first time that no cartoons aired on an American broadcast channel. The last channel still showing cartoons. Hold the plug. Cartoons were the dominant morning program from the 1960s to the 1980s.